What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? This is earlier than I'm used to getting on. I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know how I feel about this. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, we'll do. Yeah. Need something going. He half asleep. Yeah, it's going to take a minute. I drank coffee. It's just going to, you know, do that thing. That brain thing. You know what I'm talking about? Da, da, da. I'm going to bring that up. What is the, um, how's the audio sound? Is the music, I mean, we'll wait for the music a little bit. If the music gets loud or anything like that, make sure somebody tells me. The last thing I want to do is have to deal with like sound issues later. Oh, Warhorse Studios announced, give me an announcement. Give me a few minutes. Sorry. Warhorse Studios. What do they make? Just inject caffeine directly into my veins. Please and thank you. Yeah. What's up, Rags? What's up, Ellie? Dom, Pinky, Norsky, Jax. It's a cat. Good day. Good day indeed, my friend. Good day indeed. Man. So, um... You know, I'll give it I'll give it a couple minutes and I'll kind of give you guys a rundown on the docket of what today's stream is going to be because this is going to be it's going to be a lively one. It's going to it's going to be a lively day. <laughs> this is I don't get to do uh I don't get to do all the things I normally do, you know what I mean? I mean, I, we're still going to do all the stuff we normally do, but Hey, I'm actually here at the start. Well, maybe you know what? Just for you, I'll start I'll start streaming earlier. Leg drops. That's right, baby. Hey, good luck with the contest today. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. The Barmentage. Blue Dracon and Dracon Uh, good timing. Just finished your Warframe video. Awesome. You know what? I'm really happy that people enjoyed that. I really am. Like, I always like being able to share like new experiences with games, and you know the. I mean, let's be honest. Like the the. Social media very much is like stay on the thing that's hot right now And if you try to do anything other than what's the hottest thing right now, then well, you usually get kind of punished for it But I, I don't really like I want to be like I want to be like Seth <laughs> I want to be like Seth where he can play like the most abstract games possible and just talk about it and just you know and That just sounds awesome to me I hope you weren't too bombarded with information after the video came out. Don't worry. I ignore the comments <laughs> No, 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 no. I, I mean, I flipped through some of them. There were some really, really generous people that actually sent me some gifts. Things that I didn't know that I needed, by the way, and found out immediately after that it was something that I really needed. Like, somebody sent me, like, Warframe slots. I think somebody sent me some Forma. Luckily, I, I, I realized very quickly that I didn't know what those things were, so I didn't use them, which is good, because the last thing I'd want to do is use, like, Forma and stuff like that on you know, on like a base frame or base weapons. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do something like that. Second, thank you. Oh my God. Second, thank you for the uh, membership. Appreciate that. And also, Neo, thank you for the prime. Appreciate that. <laughs> we out here. We do be out here. Uh, Warframe is a really great game. You'll have an absolute blast if you keep playing. Yeah, yeah, I think maybe that's what we might play today, actually, after, after, like, this main stream and the competition and stuff like that. Once the competition's over, then, you know, we'll go, maybe we'll go stream some Warframe. There's still, like, news and stuff like that that I want to discuss and a few other things as well, so. There's all kinds of different, there's shenanigans, shenanigans on deck today, guys. This is going to be a, uh, gonna be an interesting day. We'll say that. It's going to be a very interesting day. Uh, you brought up the time gating and 
said it had to do with the monetization. I think that's part of the reason, but Warframe generally does not want you to get burnt out. It wants you to keep... It wants you to... A brain. It wants you to stop playing and go away and come back. Um... Also, Unity, thank you for the, uh... Thank you for the, uh... One... Tier 1 for 6 months in advance. You psycho. Super generous, man. Thank you. Um... Have you looked into streaming to Twitter? You guys that, like, want me posting all my content on Twitter are, like, driving me crazy. I don't... I, I don't think... I, I would have to buy a membership to Twitter to be able to do it in the first place. And I don't want to get... I just... I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I don't want to get Twitter blue. I don't care... Like, I don't care about Twitter. Like, I realize that I need to probably care more about Twitter, but, like, I don't really give a shit about Twitter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I like I do, and I realize I need to, but also at the same time, like, the chemicals in my brain are telling me not to. <laughs> uh, so far as, like, the time-gating comment... Oh, man. I don't know. Like, I get where you're, I get where you're coming from. I totally get where you're coming from with this. And I just still don't think the time gating's the way. I think that there's certain things that you can time gate and it makes sense. Uh, and also, thank you guys for starting a hype train, by the way, as well. Um, I think I think time gating makes sense in the context of some games, but I don't think it makes context in the sense of every game. And I think that's the biggest problem, man, is that like a lot of games just don't necessarily like utilize these tools the right way. You know, if you want to talk about a game that's built to, for you to be able to... Uh, you know, I always look at like Final Fantasy 14, right? It's like the best game, the best example that I can give of a game that's really good for you to be able to pick up and put down at any time that you want to, because nothing in the game ever expires. Everything in the game is always useful. They don't need to use time gates or anything like that to keep you away from wanting to play the game, nor do they monetize those time gates. You know, so like, I agree with you to a point, right? I agree with you to a point because to a point you're absolutely right because like yeah okay like they, they want you to take breaks but when they monetize that that break that they're trying to make you take that doesn't necessarily add up you know what I mean <laughs> Jax thank you for the uh thank you for the gifted subs I appreciate that salt dude salt dude Um, everyone talks about Twitter being a toxic place, but everybody's using it. I'm too old for Twitter. I think that's really just me, jo uh, uh, evil. That's me. I'm just, I think I'm just too old for Twitter. I just don't understand it. Like, I tried posting, I tried posting absurd things. I tried pers posting, like, mean things. I tried being nice, and it doesn't work. <laughs> and none of it works. <laughs> uh, what do you, uh, what do you mean you are out? There are... A lot of bugs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that. I saw the major order drop today. Also, over uh, overtime. Thank you for the prime. Appreciate that. You guys are being incredibly generous this morning. Tija, thank you for the uh, sub as well. Um, Yeah. But I've enjoyed my time with the game. I, I Honestly, I've been having a lot of fun just playing like a variety of games lately. For like for the longest time. Like, for the longest time, I was always playing the same stuff over and over and over again. And I mean, like, I'm talking about, like, not bridging out to any other, um, like, any other uh, genre or anything like that. Everything I was doing was just so damn similar. You know what I mean? Gotta get you hyped. Everything I was doing was just so similar. And I was just always going back and playing the, you know, older games and stuff like that. Playing other live service games and things like that. But like now I've been playing like such a wide variety of stuff, dude. It is so crazy. It all started when I gave him a Nuka Cola. Yeah. Yeah. It was irradiated. Speaking of, speaking of, like now I have the now I have the fallout brain worm, and part of me okay, so you know, uh, just a confession to have. I've never played Fallout New Vegas. And now I have the, the bug. I have the brain worm. I have the, I want, I'm like, I'm thinking about living that vault dweller life. You know what I mean? Like, maybe I, maybe it's time I actually go and play Fallout New Vegas. You know, is the hype, does the hype m m uh, match up? Didn't I buy it? I'm disappointed in myself.
I didn't. It's in my it's in my cart. I never hit purchased. Never hit purchase. Tale of Two Wastelands. Twitter's the back alley of the internet. That's actually pretty that's actually pretty true. Looking good today. Yeah, I got a haircut. What do you guys think? We think. I think it looks pretty good. I think she did a pretty bang up job, to be honest with you. I sat in the chair, and I'm not kidding you. I literally just I was I felt like I felt like I went to like Catholic confession, because I I sat down and I was like, all right, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know what to do. And she's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, I don't know what to do with my hair. I don't know. I'm like, I, I like it long, but the problem is, if it gets any longer than this, it's gonna turn into a fro, and it's just gonna get out of control. And there's nothing that I can do about it. And I'm like, and every single time I come to one of these people and ask them to cut my hair, they always mess it up in some way, shape, or form, and it just doesn't turn into exactly what I want it to be. And I'm like, you know, I'm just, I'm like, can I trust you? And she looked at me sincerely and said, I don't know. <laughs> and I was like, She's like, so what do you want me to do? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm just going to trust you regardless. <laughs> she's like, she's like, so you're just saying just dealer's choice. And I'm like, yeah. And she's just like, okay, well, I'm just going to give you a cut that will, I think will look good on you. And I'm like, all right, sounds good. <laughs> and then there you go. It doesn't look too bad. She did okay. Earned the tip. See, you know the thing? We always talk negatively about tipping culture. You always tip your hairstylist. <laughs> You always tip the person that cuts your hair. Less you ask for problems. <laughs> Sabbath, what's up, man? Fallout New Vegas is a game that you have to be patient with. Uh, because it really has aged. People will tell you it's you need to mod it. They are correct. In order to stabilize the game. Well, it's just a typical... Uh, well, I guess Vegas wasn't Bethesda. That was Obsidian. We always tip. True. True. True, true. It does look good. She's talented. Yeah, you know what it is? I also picked the one that had like the craziest hairstyle in the building too, right? So like she had like this like blue crazy looking fucking, you know, weave going on. And I was like, you probably know what's up. It could have been me. I could have been the one that could have showed up for stream with like a blue clay, like crazy weave going on. I could I look like I was straight out of like uh, fifth element or something like that. Sixth element? Fifth element. Fallout New Vegas is overrated. The best fall. Uh, it is the best Fallout game because it is. Oh, it's not overrated. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, like, I, so I have, I, I by the way, the Fallout games are all on sale right now. Uh, smart of them to do that. Total five head move there. Jesus. TV show comes out and you put your games on sale. Smart, smart, smart. So I do have Fallout 4 and Fallout 5, or 5, New Vegas. I still refuse to buy New, or uh, 76, though. I, I don't care that it's now reached its highest numbers yet. I don't care about that. That's not what I... You know, that's not, no, no, no. CDPR did the same thing for Witcher and Cyberpunk. Yeah, I guess I could say that. Oh, yeah, yeah, they did, didn't they? 76 was a bad mistake for me. Yeah, it was. You know what the thing is? Have you guys ever thought about this? You ever like look at a bunch of games and you always think to yourself, you're like, man, I wish this was an MMO. Or I wish this was co-op. And then you get what you asked for and it's just not good. Like, don't get me wrong. I think that like Fallout 76 has a whole other shitload of, you know, a whole other ton of issues on the side. But outside of that, the other thing is, is that it's like, I don't know, man. like we're always, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just don't, I don't think we're right. <laughs> I don't think we're right sometimes. I think. Sometimes it sounds like it's a good idea, but it ends up being a bad idea. I think that's what it ends up being more times than not. Like, look how t look how long it took for Elder Scrolls Online to become good, right? 
I mean, we ended up getting the MMOs of the two games that everybody asked for. Both Fallout and and Elder Scrolls were two games that people were like, bro, oh, I, I, I wish that these games were, I wish that these games were, uh, uh, you know, MMOs. I wish that they were, uh, they were co-op. Honestly, I didn't even really wish them to be MMOs. I wanted them just to be co-op games. And I'm still upset we still don't have just regular co-op versions of those games. You know what I mean? Fun fact, Fallout 1 gave us Shady Sands Shuffle, uh, which is killing someone by reverse pickpocketing a live grenade into their inventory. Beautiful. Beautiful. Fallout overall is good because of the community. I mean, I mean, let's be real. When the games released, when Fallout 3 and New Vegas and Fallout 4 released, they were good games. Like, obviously, they were supported afterwards, but when they came out, they were absolutely fantastic. They had their issues, of course they did, but they were still good. Well written quest lines. Yeah, there's just there's also just something incredibly satisfying about using VATS to just, you know, <laughs> explode everything. Literally explode everything. Kingdom Come Deliverance just got announced for this year. I'll have to check that out. The stream was so good. Nomad, thank you for the tier one, man. Appreciate that. Probably Bethesda still making it. <laughs> well, I mean, you got to think about it. We're probably 10 years plus away from another Fallout game. So it'll be like almost 20 years since the last Fallout game. I'm actually surprised they haven't like activated Obsidian in that. Or is Obsidian like completely against having anything to do with like Bethesda IPs anymore? You guys know? Can I just grab this one thing, please? You have to move this and I'll grab this. And this. I'm gonna put this right here. And then uh, also, uh, uh, Butte, thank you for the thank you for the follow. Let me. Oh my God, that's way too big. There we go. I'm putting that down here. So, um, all right. Oh, I'm gonna give you guys the rundown on how today's gonna go. Basically, so I'm a part of this whole. OTK top streamer competition, right? Most of you guys don't know about it. Some of you guys do know about it. I really appreciate those that have shown up today. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a fantastic day. It's going to be embarrassing. It's going to be fun. It's going to be funny. It's going to be sad. It's going to be a roller coaster ride. Okay. Basically, what's going to happen is, is that uh, my mom, my mother, my beautiful mother has sent me a ton of pictures. Okay. We're going to go through them. And uh, here's the deal. So the OTK competition, they sent out a thing and they said, you can do a stream and stream whatever you want. And they're like, but then they kind of gave all these different ideas for like all this like crazy stuff, right? And, um, and I like duct tape yourself to a wall or, you know, I, I don't like, you know, try to put a puzzle together while on a roller coaster. I don't know, like just like, like crazy stuff. And the thing is, is that like, initially, I'll be honest with you guys. I was, I was stressing out about it. I was, I was stressing out really hard because I was like, you know, I want to make sure that I make a good impression. I would really like to, you know, get further into the competition. I would like to get more exposure and things like that. But like also at the same time, like I don't want to showcase, you know, who I'm not. You know, I I'd rather just be myself. And I figured that the best way to be able to do that today would be to. Well, just be myself and talk about myself because I realized that like after, you know, the the this YouTube channel has been up for over two years now. Um, you know, it's, it started as one thing. It evolved into another, uh, the, the, I've been streaming for a year now and you know, I, like I, I talk about myself a little bit, but I don't really like connect on that level very often as much as I feel like I probably should in some cases, because I do feel that, 
in a lot more cases than not uh that's kind of what people want you know what i mean like people want to know more about people they want to uh, reflect on that kind of thing and stuff like that so what i figured i would do today is i would tell you guys the true story of legendary drops uh so my mom sent me a bunch of random pictures i'm just gonna go we're just gonna click through them and i'm gonna do my best to try to remember some of the best stories from those times and then also try to um and then also try to bring us up to today and how we got here so we go in the way back machine and then we go to the but to the current day machine the me machine so that's what the idea that that's what the idea is going to be so we're going to be doing that and then uh and then after that we'll go into like normal gaming news and just all that good stuff the competition starts in like 30 minutes uh, they'll give me like a, there's, if you guys notice on stream, you see there's like a little contestant icon right here. Uh, this guy will change to on deck and then it'll change to on air. And then they're only going to have me on there for like four minutes, but I'm still going to continue with the whole thing. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to like make a, start a story and then end a story before, you know, giving you guys the conclusion. Let's come on, man. So if you're a fan of if you're a fan of good storytelling and nostalgia, video games, cartoons, everything, oh man, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. I actually haven't even looked like I've only looked at a couple of the pictures because I saw them when I like downloaded them. But outside of that, I really don't know like what they're gonna be. Uh, there's a couple of them that I'm just gonna say my mom did me kind of dirty to be honest with you. Huh? Does the voting work on YouTube as well? No, the voting only works on Twitch. Sadly. Can we contribute using YouTube? No, you cannot. That doesn't mean that you guys need to watch on Twitch the entire time, but you know, when the when the voting thing comes up, I think you can vote like the minute that I'm on screen or something. I'm not really exactly sure how it works. I don't know how the extension works or anything like that. Uh, uh, we can endorse you anywhere or is it, it's a, so it's, 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 you can endorse me on Twitch. So on Twitch, there's an extension. If you're on your web browser, I don't, I, it should work on mobile too. I'm not sure if it does or not. Um, and then you guys will be able to just click it and the extension should be up right now. And, uh, Mark, thank you for the, uh, thank you for the super chats, man. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, you have to, you have to engage with it on Twitch. So if you want to like watch on YouTube and then like switch over to Twitch to vote and stuff, then you can kind of go for it. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Knowing Twitch, the extension will break the moment they switch over to you. Maybe. Maybe. To be honest, I don't really know a whole lot about Twitch. Hello, Carlos. On the OTK channel, no. I, so they go, they're going to be streaming it on on NMP LOL, but you can actually just watch it on my YouTube channel or on my Twitch channel. Sorry, you can watch it on my Twitch channel, and it'll have the extension. The extension's already activated on my on my page. I'm pretty sure it should be. It should be. I don't know. I guess I have to check. I don't have any streaming problems today. <clears throat> That'd be a son of a. I have to watch my language today, too. I forgot about that. That was another thing. I have to I have to watch my tongue. Uh, but the I believe that the the Twitch link, if you guys did want to use Twitch, the Twitch link should be in the description of the uh, of the live stream of the live stream. If it's not, then I can just drop it in chat. Thank you for follows. Two follows on Twitch. Norski and uh, Virginie. Thank you. Appreciate that. Better not say any bad words. Blizzard will ban you. Uh, I saw that whole situation, by the way. The, the guy that got banned. Like it's, I think that I think stuff like that is dumb on both sides, right? Safina, thank you for the uh, prime. Appreciate that. Four months, Safina. 
Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, so I saw that, I saw that whole band situation, right? And <laughs> like, it's dumb on both sides. It's dumb on, it's dumb on Blizzard because it's kind of like, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, ex the extension's up. Top, I see it right here. If you highlight the screen, you can see like the voting and stuff. Info, contestants, schedule, OTK top streamer, prime benefits gaming. Yeah. And then there's, and then it'll probably have like a, like a voting thing that comes up on here after a while or something like that. If I had to take, take a wild guess. Um, let's see. The base. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Appreciate that indeed. Don't see it on mobile. Yeah, it probably isn't going to work. What's their channel to vote? Uh, I, like, I think you're going to be able to vote on my channel, if I'm not mistaken. I think you'll be able to watch my stream and vote from my stream. I'm not really too sure, to be honest with you. Uh, if not, if you can't vote from my stream, then you would vote from NMP lol. N M like N is in. Nachos. I don't know. What is the call sign for N? Or M. Map? <laughs> Nancy? Nancy, Martha. Nancy, Martha, Patricia? <laughs> November, Mike? What about P? Motel? Ah, shit, you are right. Sorry, it's been a long time since I played a uh, Call of Duty game. <laughs> It is motel. Papa? Is it Papa? <laughs> no, I want, no, I want Papa's. Yeah, Mike, November, Papa, LOL. Lol. So it's going to be on NMP Lol's channel, and then it'll switch back and forth and all that good stuff. The situation in Blizzard reminds me of Warframe clan. I uh, constantly annoy us about swearing because the clan leaders are, have a 13 year old brother that was in the clan. Right. So, okay. Back back to what I was saying about that. Okay. So here's the deal. Um, one, I think it's stupid on Blizzard's side because it's like, it's the obvious, it's the obvious trap of, well, that person has to have profanity filter turned off for them to be able to see curse words in the first place. So banning the other person for swearing in a chat that, you know, you uh, technically allow it because you have a filter for it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense right also at the exact same time when you have a full ride scholarship so that you can play overwatch and you go into the chat in a public lobby and curse i mean it's like pu public private it's not a private lobby it was a public competitive lobby right <clears throat> and you and you use curse words and 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 yell at people in the are, are you are you damaged What is, why? Why would you, like? It's like, I, I use my, I'm using my favorite metaphor. I'm gonna use my favorite metaphor. Or I guess it's an analogy. What's the difference between a metaphor and analogy? It's just like, it's like seeing a Norski. Thank you for the gifted subs, man. 10, 10 gifted subs. Holy shit. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Super generous. Thank you. Seriously. Um, you took me out of it. Yeah. It's like putting, it's like, it's like seeing a bear trap and being like, I'm going to put my Ghibli's on that. I'm going to see what happens. <laughs> Let's see what the outcome is. Mess around and you find out. You know what I mean? Mess around and you find out. That's fine and out. That's just like, I, like, I think that's probably... The funny thing is, is that like, while like, yeah, it's easy to look at Blizzard and be like, yeah, they probably shouldn't have done it. At the exact same time, like, the fact that like, you are getting paid to play Overwatch by a school and then you go online and start screaming in a lot. Like, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say. 
I think that's also like one of the things that a lot of people don't realize when they once they start having to like once they take either a public or a oh man whether they they have like a, a public personality so like streaming or YouTube content creation or whatever it might be once you have like that or you're like a competitive player uh, or and this is whether it's like in this kind of space or in different ones I think that in a lot of cases people don't recognize that like they still have an individual responsibility that has to be carried out at all times otherwise they're going to find themselves in trouble like like there is an idea of like what it means to be something but you have to realize that like you have to live eat and sleep that dream and and be that person in that profession and also be that person in real life too because the problem is like the things that you do outside of it or even inside of it within your private time still affect you professionally so like you can't ever just turn it off it doesn't work like that. Like even a really good example with this, the, the this, this competition that I'm in today, right? Like there were some people that are asking to do some things that there's like no way, no way a sponsor would ever be okay with. And it's like, guys, do you not understand what the like responsibility is here? Like, like there's a, there's a sponsor. They've paid for this whole thing to happen. Pro likely tens of thousands of dollars for this to happen. Like, no, you can't do that. And then you go, why? What do you mean, why? <laughs> what do you mean, why? <laughs> for, for, for a ton of reasons. I roll to seduce the bear trap. You failed. You are now missing a limb. Roll to stop bleeding. <laughs> uh, metaphor is you are the dirt hoping for the bear trap. Analogy is relating your hypothetical. You're imagine such a bear trap and I haven't stepped in it. Okay, so I guess it is an analogy. Not just the limb, you're the missing limb, maybe. Hell yeah, good luck tonight. Thank you, Casey, appreciate that. Hello, Ray. Um, People forget about IRL consequences when they live online. They do. They do. Big time. Big time. I, I, so I talked about this before. One of the, uh, feed the cat before it begins. He just jumped on the counter. I, I fed him before I got on, before I even turned the computer on today. But, um, uh, what was I was going to say, uh, no, people do. They genuinely, and, and the, like the thing is, I've talked about this previously but like one of the things that i often do is i like i got really into watching those like fall offs ian it's my birthday well happy birthday happy birthday i hope you have a fantastic birthday do something for yourself treat yourself you know what i mean treat yourself Um, one of the things that I've, I've gotten like hooked on over the years is like watching like the fall off videos. You know what I mean? Like the, um, like, you know, like streamers, tw like YouTubers, content creators that were like massive and then like fell off because of something. And I'm like, and it's like nine times out of 10, it is always something to do with like ego. And then like not realizing that like the internet isn't the real world. I like or like just crazy stuff like that. Like people think they can get away with like crazy stuff. I don't know. It's just it's just wild. It's wild. I bought a few things from your local food bank. What's a food bank? Is that a grocery store? I'm going to I'm going to continue to say like now I want to continue to use the word metaphor over and over again so I don't forget about that game cuz that game actually looks really good. When does that come, what does metaphor come out? I don't know. I don't, I'm going to 
Maybe I should like drop it in my book. There, I put I put it somewhere so I wouldn't forget it. So I wouldn't forget it. Are you gonna play guitar? I don't solo. I'm not a lead guitarist. You're not play leads. Uh, no, I mean, I guess I, I guess I play like leads and rhythm, but not like actual like wheelie wheelie wow. I don't do that shit. That ain't made out. I like chords. <laughs> I like chords. I like, uh, I play like on th I play like on three strings. <laughs> I play metal music with your teeth. No, but that goes back to what I was saying before. Like, it's one of those things where, like, even that, like, I was like, oh, maybe I'll learn like, uh, like I like there, there's all kinds of different ideas that I was like going through initially, where I was like, oh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. And then, like, initially, then I was like, bro, none of this stuff is me. And it's like, and here's the thing, like, like, I, like, the objective today, by the way, if you guys didn't know, the objective is to, like, you know, attract more viewers, get some, get some, uh, um, like, get some added exposure. And it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to try to get added exposure if that exposure is coming at the cost of them not, uh, of them expecting something that will never probably happen. Does that make sense? Like, that was one of the things that I kind of stuck on and, sorry, that was kind of one of the things that I stuck on initially was I was like sitting back and I was realizing, I'm like, bro, I'm like, if I can't, if like I hopped on here and like try to do something wild, you know, even if it was just like a one-time thing to like try to impress people, then you know what ended up happening is like there would be people that would come to follow me and think that, and they'd make that an expectation, like that's the guy they came to watch, but that guy would probably never do those things, you know what I mean? Like, I would rather just do stuff, you know, for the most part, that's actually pretty, you know, <laughs> it, like, something you can expect. Is the voting today? I think, yeah, the voting's today. They'll, they'll pick somebody to eliminate by the end of the day. I don't know, how, or most of the people will probably be eliminated. I can't remember how many, like, after this, I think, um, I think there's like three more episodes in this chapter. Do what you do. That's why I watch you. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I know the voting will be today. I don't exactly know how the voting works. I want to know, know something for the wicked looks good. Something for the wicked. <laughs> no rest for the wicked. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, like. Um, isn't that out today? People are playing it today, right? Darth is playing it. The moment is the blood. You don't look so envious. It's okay. Neither am I. Let me pick up all the quests. So let's pick up the other quests. It looks good. Oh, I'm sorry. Dual PC setup. Actually, I'm gonna give one to the girlfriend. We give the other one. It's a really interesting art style. I like that. Like, uh, I like that. Um, what is it? Ori. Ori. What time of the game is it? I think it's a looter. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a looter, if I'm not mistaken. It's like, uh, most people try to say it's like Path of Exile meets, um, Path of Exile or like Diablo meets Dark Souls. Yeah, an ARPG, ARPG with Souls-like mechanics. Yeah, that's what a lot of, that's what a lot of people have been, been saying. A stream within a stream. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I have... Yeah, so these guys are supposed to. Pretty good. These guys should have sponsored me, and they should have given me a copy of the game so I could review it. But they didn't do that. Oh, that's cool. I got hurts my feelings. Let me be honest, guys. That kind of hurts. When you love the environment, you work to protect it. 
the Subaru Solterra. Because I want it. Because <laughs> I want it. <laughs> I'm such a good actor that I actually made myself cry. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I made myself cry. <laughs> Acting. That's impressive. <laughs> That's why you could never trust me. You never know what I'm coming for you. You never know what's coming. <laughs> Man, this guy's really sad. This guy's really sad about this. He's a very sad man. And then you're like, <laughs> I saw him cry. He said, he said he loved us. He said he was so thankful for us. We saw the tears. Meanwhile, I'm in the background like, <laughs> don't make us cry now. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. We never have. Didn't mean it. I didn't, I didn't mean it. Legendary eye drops. Yeah. You want to know? You guys want to? I, I can teach you guys how to cry. You guys want to know? You want to know how to how to make yourself cry? What I do is I just imagine. I just imagine not being able to sneeze. Like I just imagine the feeling of not being able to sneeze. And it's the most painful experience that you can ever have in your life. <laughs> it's your opportunity to give uh to game give the game to someone and you know how it feels, yeah. Like Shrek, I guess. I think about my dearly departed dog. That is dark. That's sad. Why would you No, I'm sad I'm actually sad. Sorry about your dog. <laughs> yeah, it looks interesting. I, I like I've had a lot of people ask me about it too. I wonder how I I wonder what how it's gonna pop off, if it's gonna pop off. Are there a lot of people playing it? Uh Ed, thank you for the uh, tier one, man. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. And also Sam, I'm sorry I missed your prime as well. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, are a lot of people streaming it? Eep. Eep. I mean, 160k, uh, 166k, uh, viewers right now. So it's doing its normal, like, you know, first day of launch peak. You got, you got, you got Mr. Uh, Mr. Co Carnage playing it. Uh, Alan Zonka. Zonka. Zizrain, Rax Anorax, Ithalian. I mean, you got you got all the you got all the all the regulars. Luality, I like Luality. He's funny. The best way to tackle your backlog, you, all you have to do is just start. Okay, that's all you got to do. Just start. That's all I can tell you. The only thing that you can do is just start. Like, you just pick something and you just buckle in and you just hammer it down. That's all you can do. And ignore any new releases. Honestly, going after your backlog is like the smartest thing you can, you can do to start saving like a ton of money. Because chances are, by the time the new releases that you want to play come out... You're gonna end up buying, or like, you're gonna end up buying them on sale by the time you finish out with like everything else that you have. And like, I have a ton of stuff that's in my, uh, I have, I have a ton of stuff that's in my backlog, a ton, a ton. Some of it I just buy, even though I don't necessarily even have the like. I sometimes I'll buy things on sale because it's like just in case I want to buy it, or just because I want, just in case I want to play it. You know what I mean? Oh. 
Well, I'm just going to turn that off now. Hold on. I have to change some things real quick. Okay, let's just take I think I have it turned off, right? I don't see it. Okay. Gay. Oh, sorry. I, I had to turn some stuff off. I had to turn some stuff off. I also need to like put myself back. Put myself like right here. That'll be good. Pippa hands, I don't want to live in a world without hell divers. How would you live in a world without hell? Oh, I get what you're saying. Like in case you were like trying to like knock out your backlog and then you were like stuck in the backlog and you completely skipped out on hell divers and the hype of hell divers. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel, I, I feel it. I feel that. Uh, did you look at No Rest for the Wicked? I, yeah, we we're, we we're just watching, uh, just watching my buddy, uh, Darth Micro transactions playing it for a little bit. It looks good. It looks good. I'm impressed. I think it's gonna, I think people are gonna like it. I don't think it's gonna be like, you know, I don't think it's going to be a breakout hit. If it is, that's awesome. I'm all here for it, to be honest. Like the more like smaller middle market and indie game studios that succeed, the better. And I mean, like genuinely, it's going to be the better for all of us. It is going to be the best for all of us. There's going to be nothing better than that for us. <laughs> I'll be honest. Like, if a, a lot of people are like, well, how do we fix the video game industry with all the different problems, and the pricing issues and all that stuff? It's, it's buying indie games and buying middle market games. It's buying this stuff because what it does is it shows the, it shows the developers and the studios and the publishers and the biggest, you know, ends of the industry, you know, what our, um, what our, what our tastes are and what do we want and what's going to make them money, right? We show them what makes them money and then they go and make that instead. <laughs> Buy in for no rest of the Rick wicked a little high. How much is it? Thirty-five ninety-nine. Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, it depends on how long it is. But it, I mean, since it's supposed to be like an ARPG with like looter, like loot and stuff like that, I guess. I don't know, man. It's an early, it's early access. So personally, if I had to make, if I had to make a suggestion to most people without playing it at all, I would say don't get it. I'm just going to be real. Like the best thing that you can do is just not. Best thing you can do is just, just not do it. <laughs> Cause like, here's the thing, like I, I, the funny thing is that like some of my favorite games over the last year or so have been some of my, some of the, last, the games I've really enjoyed over the last few years have been early access games. Look at, uh, Power World, look at, um, uh, Baldur's Gate 3, Diablo 4, right? Um, you know, I, I buy early access games all the time, but with that said, I wouldn't suggest other people to buy them. I mean, the only one that I ever would have bought, I, I would ever have suggested to people would have been uh, Baldur's Gate 3. That one I told friends to get all the time, especially when it was on sale. At one point, you could get Baldur's Gate 3 early access, like, just a couple, two or two and a half years ago or something like that. I think I got it for like 30 bucks. So I ended up getting one of the greatest games in the last 30 years, last 30 years, in the last 10 years for 30 bucks. 
a pretty good deal. <laughs> that's a pretty good deal. Bonds. Bonds. What's up, buddy? Thank you for the uh uh thank you for the sub over on or thank you for the uh Twitch Prime. Appreciate that, man. Triple A is dead for me. Triple A's not dead. Triple A's far from dead. Like I it's it's the it is the vast majority of a lot of AAA games that have a lot of problems, but at the exact same time, there are companies that are still pumping out a pretty quality product. If you say AAA is dead to you, then don't play Elden Ring and don't play its DLC when it comes out. Don't play whatever the next FromSoft game is. Or Ghost of Tsushima when it hits uh, PC. Did it hit? Did it already come out on PC? I don't know if it did or not yet. Is Quadruple A dead? No. Quadruple A, <laughs> you can't kill what's already dead. You can't kill what's already dead. It's well, it's, it's alive and well, my friends. It's alive and well. Stop beating it's already dead. How many A's do we get to attribute to GTA 6? I don't know, man. Like, talk about, um, talk about how wild that is. You know what I mean? Like, talk about how, cra how crazy that is that, um, like, how much money is going into that game? There's a lot of money going into that game. A lot, man. And I, uh, I don't know, like, for, like when it comes to Rockstar, like they can't drop the ball on that. They've invested way too much money into it. So chances are it's probably going to be like absolutely massive. It's probably going to be an incredible game. But at the end of the day, the thing is, it's still going to be Grand Theft Auto. You know what I mean? Like, like keep your, you know, keep your uh, uh, expectations limited on what the game is going to be because it's still going to be GTA, right? It's still just going to be like, you know, what if I could just do whatever I want in the world video game? Uh... But I mean, they do, they always throw in some crazy stuff. So who knows? Who knows what kind of game it's going to be? I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see for sure. Do we need some other writing? So that's why I've kind of changed. Like I, I actually picked this up. So, so uh, I don't know. Did you guys watch? Did you guys watch the Bellatro video today? Bellatro is a wake up call. If you didn't watch it. And then watch it again and then share it to a friend. It's very good. It's a very good video. I'm really, I'm really proud of myself. It turned out really well. Um, I really like the term middle market studio, middle market product. I really like that. I really like that. I think it's a really cool, um, I think it's a really cool idea or I think it's a really cool, um, like concept so far as like a, a term to use rather than like double A because like double A makes it sound like it's less of a product than a triple A game but I really 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 like middle market because that makes it sound like it just has less funding and that's it so I'm kind of sticking to that one to be honest I'm sticking to that one I really like it I like it middle market you got your indies, your middle market, and your triple A's. Yeah, yeah. Because the thing is, is that like, so if you guys, un so like triple A was something that was attributed to games for marketing purposes. That's what like triple A is always usually stood for marketing, triple A marketing. It's the marketing treatment, which is true for many triple A games. They are, they are heavily marketed far more than middle market games are. And, uh, and, and definitely more than indie games, right? Triple A actually has nothing to do with the level of polish. It has everything to do with the investment into the uh, the game's marketing more than anything else. So, um, <sighs> so yeah, I think I did the thing that I'm supposed to do. There's like a thing I'm supposed to do. And I think I did it.
need to break this off. I'm just going to put this like over here. I'm going to put this little box over here too. Sorry, I'm just making space on my desktop. I got all kinds of shit going on right now, okay? Watch your language, bad boy. I have to be a really good job. Uh, OTK? Yeah, it's OTK. So they're going live in like three minutes. But for the most part, I'm not really going to pay attention to it. Give likes if you're watching. Easy way to support. Always an easy way to support. Always be an easy way to support. Uh, half the price of the advertisement you get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Manor Lord seems like the next great indie. Really? What is Manor Lord? I don't know if I've looked at it. Late game maximum difficulty. Hmm. I'll have to... I'll have to take a peek. I'll have to look at it later. I'll have to look at it later. At this point, I don't mind... Uh, I don't mind 20 hours of a game if it's good. See, but the thing is, like, I don't... Here's the thing. Like, here's my deal, man. I don't have a problem with games being 20 hours. I don't have a game. I don't have a problem with a game being five hours. I do have a game. I do have a problem with a game being 15 hours and $70. Like too quickly consumed. It's not worth the money. And no, I'm not going to do it. Looter shooter enjoyer. What about once human? Uh, I I've, so I have, I have beta access. I hopped onto it. Um, it's very janky still. Like, and for the fact that for it to be in like closed beta, it feels like it's more closed alpha. Hellblade 2 has entered the chat. Exactly, Cass. Exactly. Like, here's the thing. Like, there are some games that just don't deserve to be made. I'm sorry. Not everything has to be made. Uh, hot take. Hot take. Not everything has to be made. And if you can't sell it for a fair price, then maybe it shouldn't be made. If you're like, well, we, no, you don't understand. We're pushing technology forward by making sure that we're putting out this game that's basically a movie. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. An interactive movie for $60. You're going to play it for five hours and it's done. And it's just like, ah, yeah, you probably shouldn't have invested in that. Well, yeah, it's a really cool idea. And it's great that you got the, that you were, you got the funding. I wouldn't expect that to turn a profit. I'm sorry. I wouldn't expect it to turn a profit. Unreal. Unreal. Oh. I can't believe I got to do another cleanup. My, like, notepad has gotten out of control. There's so many notes that I have written down on here. So crazy. So crazy. Oh, man. Drops and Rory streaming at the same time, and I can't be in both places at once. I, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Blame it on Rurikon for streaming at the same time as me. He needs to... He needs to learn. Oh! Well! Man. I guess we're gonna do this. I guess we're gonna do this whole thing. Oh, I need that other thing real quick. Hold on. Let me grab something. I 
Okay. Oh, man. So, here's how this is going to work, my friends. Today, what we are going to do is we are going to go on a journey. A mental journey, if anything else. A, 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 a journey of fantastical flight and fantasy. Okay. Today, what we're going to do is I'm going to do my best to recount as much of my life as I possibly can from only a handful of pictures. We're going to go from the day... That I, I, probably not the day that I was born, because I can't remember that, right? So let's be a little bit realistic. But I, I have a collection of pictures, and we're going to go from, well, you know, the past until close to today. And uh, yes, we're going to see if we can get to current day the best that we can. I would like to give you guys the best possible, uh, the best possible layout for, you know, like how I got to where I am today, which is jobless and on youtube <laughs> so uh yeah it's gonna be interesting you, you know you're gonna laugh you know you're probably gonna cry and i don't know i don't know it's gonna be an adventure to say the least whether or not you're gonna be able to come out on the other side having learned something i can't tell probably you should you know i would apply much of my life to your own if you have the opportunity to do so uh you know i'm a great example of human beings in general so it's probably a smart idea um but uh no uh, i honestly this is just a really cool um this is just a really cool opportunity for me to be able to um i don't know expose myself a little bit uh, it, it's it's good practice for me for storytelling but more than anything else it's a good opportunity for you guys to get to know me better than you ever have before so we're gonna get personal yeah um i honestly haven't really looked through the pictures to be honest um i've seen a couple uh a couple of them have i wish they weren't there <laughs> but uh <sighs> it's gonna be interesting to say the least so uh with everything started to use the tissues out i don't think you're gonna hopefully <laughs> The problem is, is that this is the internet, so when somebody says tissues out, I don't necessarily know what that means. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, move, 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 moving, move, move, moving on. <laughs> I don't know about all that. Uh, and honestly, when it comes to me, it could mean either one. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's either flattering or uh, flattering, I think. I don't really know. So, yeah, anyway, uh, it's gonna be uh, dirty socks. Do your laundry. I never understood the whole socks thing. We can't get into that today. <laughs> we'll get into that on a different stream, on a different day. You already cried? Exactly. Exactly. So you already know it's the start of an absolutely fantastic day. So, uh, I guess, man, here we go. Without uh, further ado, uh, wait, what? Wait, are there going to be feet pics? Maybe. There might be. Hold on, I need to change this. And then I can still leave that there. That'll be good, honestly. Um, he's deleting him. <laughs> Best birthday ever. <laughs> uh. That's for subs only? Yeah, sorry. I'm gonna have to go to subs only if uh, if I see feet pop up. I don't know. I probably should have I probably should have scanned through to try to see if I could feet find any feet, you know, feet pics or anything like that. I must have I messed up a little bit there, man. Sorry. I could have gotten it I could have could have done this a little bit better. You know what I mean? Um so um let me let me use the restroom. 
and then we're going to get started. Okay. I shall return. Oh, all right. Such a twitch moment. Go chair. <laughs> yeah. Based chair as always, right? I wonder if I can do this. Wait, what? What is this? Dude, there's this one comment that I, I like. I want to. I want to go in on that. I just. I don't. <sighs> so like something that's like really weird. Like before I get started, so I made that. So I made that. Um, I made the Bellatra video right. And there's like somebody that that I guess has like watched a lot of my videos in the past and they really like in, enjoyed my videos and stuff. And they said, I'm really tired of gambling creeping its way into uh, uh, creeping its way further into video games. This dude was reviewing indie game, indie gems like Baldur's Gate 3, Pal World and Helldivers. Bellatro does not look like a gem. It looks like some bullshit introduction into gambling. Sorry, man. I like your content, but this is something I'm going to have to disagree with you on. And it's like. Because the game has poker elements, it's somehow a gambling game, even though there's no gambling anything in the game. You don't even like bet chips or anything like that. Like it's literally, it's, it's, it's effectively, it's effectively solitaire. It's effectively solitaire. Like, I, like, I, like I'm, there's no inherent gambling that has anything to do with poker. You know what I mean? Like that. It's, it's, yeah, it's a killer roguelite that has zero to do with gambling. If anything, it's something that actually helps more people than, than hurts. Because at the end of the day, you have folks... At the end of the day, you have folks that are actually, like, getting themselves probably off of gambling by playing the game to begin with. You know what I mean? So it's just really weird that you would have people that would do something or say something like that. Like, I, I don't even know how you would even come to that conclusion in the first place. Like people, uh, people are allowed to disagree with, allowed to disagree with me. But at the same time, like I'm gonna argue stuff like that because it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense for you to try to jump to that kind of conclusion, and and, and also write off games like this. And the only reason why I even get upset about the fact that somebody would say something like that is because Peggy is because the Peggy system did actually go against the developer and rate the game as 18 and up, which I think is ridiculous. I think that is wild, dude. Could you imagine, like that? So, somehow a game just because it used play, it uses playing cards is somehow a, um, some, somehow because a game is using playing cards, it somehow is now a gambling game. It's just like, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> what? No, that's not how this works. 
That's not how this works, dude. So, I I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. It's just... I don't like so I I realize it's just the internet. People go to jump to conclusions like they jump to conclusions, but like <sighs> dude. Dude. Peggy you're pretty hot about gambling issue to be fair. Well, here's the thing, like that's fine to be that's fine to be like hard, like have a hard on for the for the gambling stuff, but at the exact same time, like you need to be fair in your in your judgment. Just because a game uses playing cards doesn't mean that it's effectively a gambling game. I didn't realize that a deck of cards means gambling. It's just I wonder if he plays the lottery. Chances are more than like more times than not. People normally do stuff like that. Anyway. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, today we tell the life and times of legendary drops. We are going from the olden days to the golden days and seeing uh, all the stories and the things that I have to tell from each picture that I can and try to ramble the best that I can as well because I have to fit this all within a relatively longer stream than I'm usually used to. So today, my friends, I invite you to sit down, take a seat, kick back, put up your legs, and listen to the stories of old, the stories of new. Starting with our first random picture. I just want to say, I grew into my lips. <laughs> like, like, anytime, anytime, anytime I look at like older pictures of myself, I always immediately end up seeing that I have like, oh man, I, I realized very quickly that I grew into it more than anything else. Why do you have a picture of John Lennon? Hey, okay. I mean, that's, I, dude, that's who I was. I, I, what can I say? I actually, I was really into the Beatles at this time. I was definitely very into like bluesy rock music and stuff like that. I will say this too, by the way, at this point in my life, I was, at this point in my life, I was also, this is like an Alabama moment. The, the girl that's sitting there with me was actually like one of my first girlfriends and come to find out her aunt is actually the sister. No, no. Yeah. Her aunt is married to my brother's dad. <laughs> it was like the weirdest situation I've ever been in. It was not something that I could ever foresee happening. It was like the, the weirdest, like we just kind of like looked at each other and I'm like, well, we're not like related, but like. <laughs> but uh yeah yeah <laughs> it's not it's yeah it's um yeah it's it was an interesting uh interesting thing to begin with i will say this as well the other thing too is that like i had really bad taste in glasses as well i had really bad taste in glasses you i don't think people realize especially like especially like both men and women by the way like your taste in glasses definitely affects how people see you. And I look back and I'm like, bro, why did I wear stuff Hello, like that? You are on deck and we'll be up in a minute. Okay. So, um, so yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's the, that's the life there. That's the life there. So, um, from this time, I don't know, awkward teenager in high school, man, I really, I don't really, I don't, personally, I don't really like those days that much, if I had to tell you. I didn't really like those days. It took me a while to be able to become, like, a, uh, a sociable person. At this time in my life, I definitely wasn't sociable. Not even in the slightest. And, uh, yeah. 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 Like, high school is, like, such an awkward time to begin with in the first place. It's such an awkward time. I feel like that's like the moment that we all start like really, really getting in, uh, if that makes any sense, like really getting into ourselves or really starting to learn about yourself. And yeah, yeah. A lot of gaming, <laughs> a lot of gaming. This is like my antisocial phase as well. That's the other thing to kind of think about as well. 
I think it takes a lot of time. Like high school is such like a transformative experience. I don't know. We'll end up getting to like more of those and probably there's more like high school like era picks and stuff like that for me to talk about. But yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a. Uh, it's a uh, it's a wild time. Is it a manicure kit? Yeah, it's my mom's salon. Actually, she's a hairstylist. She's owned a salon for years now. Years and years now. I can't say that. 100% uh, glasses can change your look. Uh, I enjoyed getting a new pair, but I do not regret getting LASIK. You know, I've always wanted to... I've always wanted to get... I always wanted to get LASIK, but I never did it. And it was mostly just, like, terrified. Because I saw, like, the first time that my mom got LASIK. And I had to, like, walk her around Chicago like she was a... Um, I had to walk her around Chicago like she was a... Like she was blind. It was like the craziest thing. I remember I got attacked by like a homeless guy and he like painted my shoes because he said he was like shoe shining. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that I was that was a that was an interesting thing, especially because like I was super young at the time. So I think like it just kind of scared me for a while. So I didn't want to do like what my mom did. And, uh, you know, I, I like I was afraid I was going to be like blind for a week and uh, there's still the risk of eye dry yeah and i've also heard like a lot of things about that as well i mean i wear contacts i haven't been wearing them lately because of the fact that i've been like at home working on the computer and streaming and stuff like that and i get more eye strain like having contacts in and being on the computer than i do having my glasses on and being at a computer but i do wish that back in the day back when i was like back when i was in high school i do wish that i was better at i was better at that i do i do big time Big, big time. I wish I was, uh... Oh, I see how the OTK thing is going to work. They're going to bring up the voting, like, right after they bring me up on their page. So it'll pop up on the window on NMP lols. So, like, they just finished with somebody now, and then I'm going to be up next. But, yeah. <clears throat> but I like glasses. Yeah, I, I'm a big glasses guy, to be honest. I, like, I, I just enjoy the comfort of them more than anything else, but I like both. Ultima, thank you for the prime, man. Appreciate that. Teenage years are just weird. Yes. Hey, make sure you uh, turn off chat, please. We're... Yeah, yeah, I got you. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Teenage years are always weird, man. Teenage years are oh, they're always weird. That was just a, a really awkward time in general. I'm trying to think what else. I mean, still at this point, too, I was still like going back to uh, like I always had to like go back to my mom's work and stuff like that. This is before I had my first car. That's where everything changed. Once you get your first car. World's your oyster, baby. World is your oyster. Burbio. What's up, buddy? Oh, yeah. Sorry. It's just because of how my mic and stuff is set up. It's uh, somebody that's uh, from the OTK folks that pop in. I don't have, like, separate channels for audio. So somebody pops in to tell me that, like, I'm coming up. That's all it is. That's all it is. Uh, not me. I had no interest in myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. It's just kind of, it's wild to see pictures like this and go back this far because the thing is, is that like, I'm like not even close to being the same person anymore. Like outside of like tastes and video games and music and stuff like that, that like I held on to from those years, like <sighs> there was like a second uh uh you know uh, uh if you have any of you guys watched uh what, um solo leveling it's like a second uh second awakening second awakening came in senior year like i got i got a class change i got a class change into somebody that talks a whole lot <laughs> i don't really exactly remember what actually triggered it but something did and when it did it was just kind of uh it was just kind of gg yeah it was kind of GG. The only reason I went uh, I went to school uh, was just to be awkward. Uh, I wanted to win the awkward awards. You probably did. Late bloomer. Yeah, there was like that as well too. Um, I also had like the whole thing where I um, I don't know, man. Like, <sighs> I was in a really awkward position in high school because I was sent to a private school where all of my other friends went to public school, and I was at a school that I just didn't have a whole lot of friends. So I, you know, was social when I was in like middle school and then when I got to high school I just completely disconnected from everybody because I just didn't know I just didn't know how to react it was a really weird situation where you didn't have like right, any of your friends so 
You know what this is? This is Johnny Bravo after school, listening to Smash Mouth and absolutely ripping kids off with Pokemon cards. These, my friends, these, my friends, are the golden days. This is some top level, best life ever lived times. In that bag, it doesn't show it because you can't see it, but in that bag, was a Smash Mouth CD and Incubus Morning View. The only two CDs I would listen to for like two years straight. Oh. Oh. And by the way, this is the most unassuming child you've ever seen in your life. Looks pure. Pure as the driven snow. No. I did my best to try to make sure that like all of the rest of the kids that I went to school with believed that the starting evolutions of... Charizard, Venusaur, and Blastoise were like the worst out of all of the original trading cards. And that I was actually uncool, and that to make themselves cooler would be not to use those cards. And for some odd reason in like kid brain, that actually worked. And I have a pretty, uh, not gonna lie, I got a pretty stacked, uh, I got a pretty stacked book right now. My mom is sitting on gold right now, it's sitting in the basement. I'm so excited to go home and flip through those lately. Especially seeing like how that stuff has blown up over the last few years. But yeah, these are the golden days, man. These are the golden days. This is, I want to say N64 days too. This would be, uh, what was I playing? Smash Bros? I remember that big speaker in the back right there. That was like our first surround sound system. And I would play Legend of Zelda. Uh, Ocarina of Time. Oh. My mom still lives in that house to this day. We've been in that house. They've been in that house for years now. Dude, seeing this is like... <laughs> this is like top-end nostalgia. This is like the best. Osp Offspring was my jam. Offspring was really good too. I had them. I think uh, my brother ended up giving me... Oh, my brother ended up giving me... What was it? Green Day Dookie. And then I, I like I had a after that I just started stealing CDs from him. That's all I ever did. That's all older brothers were there for in the first place, was just to steal CDs from. Back in the day at least. I loved it, man. I loved it. Flashback Thursday, yeah, that's what it feels like. Yeah. Dookie was a banger. Yes. I like I, I hate to be like one of those people, but like nineties and early two thousands music is just it is really just the best music that's ever existed. Like there's some good stuff now, don't get me wrong, there's some good stuff now. But even or even earlier than that as well, because like I was a big uh, like probably right around this time was also when I got my first guitar and I was huge, huge into um, Eric Clapton at the time. Like Layla was like the only song I'd listen to. My mom would play that all the time in her car. Oh, Green Day recently re-released Dookie and Nimrod. Really? I didn't know that. Huh. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. You know what the funny thing is? Is that like these first era of like compact disc players were like so bad. Did you guys ever actually like, did you, I'm hoping you guys actually own some of these. You walked around, if you even like tripped over anything or like walked too fast, it would skip every five seconds. You'd have to hold it in front of you. Like you were praying, trying to make sure that it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't, it wouldn't skip or anything like that. Yeah, anti-skip, anti-skip was a lie. We all know it was a lie. We all know that was a lie. Yeah. Matured anti-skip was the go. There was no, you know what the matured anti-skip was? MP3 players. <laughs> they were, yeah, they were, yeah. They were MP3 players. No. Did a huge, uh, huge sturdy in 90s music is the most liked by all age groups. Is it really? 2000s metalcore was my heart as I lay dying Miss May I Parkway Drive. Yeah, no, those were really big for me, too. Those are really big for me, too. Uh, that was like, uh, that was actually when I started getting into playing metal. That's actually when I first started getting into playing metal more than anything else. And I loved it, dude. I loved it. I, 
I f dude, I, uh, yeah, you guys can vote for me now. You guys can vote for me now. <laughs> okay, I can close that now. Oh, man. Uh... Unless it's, uh, unless like golf or lower is better. Yeah. 10 out of 10, man. Hey, man. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. To be honest, like the vast majority of the people, like, here's the thing. Even though I got into this thing, chances are there's no way that people are going to like, like, I don't know, vote for me. I, like not being against myself or anything like that. But like Twitch is mostly younger audiences for the, you know, for the most part. So what ends up happening is, is that like, they're not going to dig these kind of talks or these kind of chats. It's not my, like, most of those folks are my kind of audience. There are those people that are out there, and I really appreciate those of you guys that did vote for me for it, but I do. Yeah, I do. It is one of those kind of things. It's all for more of the exposure than it is anything else. I'm more of a commentary and YouTube guy in the, in the first place. And like I said before, like, my whole idea was is to, rather than try to set expectations for me to be something that I'm not, I'm just going to be who I am. You know what I mean? And it's so much easier just to be who I am rather than try to be somebody that I'm not. And I don't want to, I don't want to make people watch a stream and think oh man this guy's really crazy and exciting and then you come to watch and it's really just me talking about like video game news and stuff like that more than anything else people are so critical you're just vibing being yourself yeah that's all i want to do to be honest with you where can you vote i can't see it uh it, you have to like supersize the screen if you're on uh if you're on a web browser you can go to uh nmp lol's channel and, and check it out there but yeah yeah no this is awesome too the thing is as well is that like you want to talk about like dark times are around this as well like right around this time is if i'm not mistaken this is also when um this is like right around the night of tornadoes in florida so this is if i had to take a wild guess i think this picture is from 1998 it's either 98 or 99 and basically what ended up happening i don't know if any of you guys know about this this is like ancient this is ancient news now okay back in back in like 1998 1999 there was a night called the night of tornadoes that was in florida it was the like worst um it was the worst ever recorded tornadoes in the history of florida and this is just before my mom and i were coming down there to visit my grandparents who lived in Kissimmee, st cloud and uh just before that these tornadoes came in and it was in it was like dead of night most people were sleeping when the tornadoes hit so most people didn't even know it was even happening uh, absolute uh like major incident that you know sadly killed like a ton of people but it was such a weird thing for us to come down there because we we went down to go visit my grandparents and everything was torn up my my grandparents lived by the way crazy story crazy story so they lived in one of those, uh, I don't know if you guys have grandparents that lived in places like this, but you know those, um, you know those communities that have like the modular ho homes and stuff like that? So they have all these different modular homes and are all set up and everybody's, you know, living in those. They have their little like retirement community or whatever. Well, these, tw I think it was like two or three tornadoes in one night. One of them ripped through this place. It took out more than half of the houses that were there. It actually lifted my, my grandparents' uh, modular house up off of its... Uh, up off of its supports ripped the roof off and then dropped it back down on the ground my grandmother was still on the bed on the top of the roof of the uh, of the uh, of the house my grandfather was thrown like i don't even know like like 15 20 feet away from the house um both of them survived both of them survived absolutely crazy absolutely crazy and it's one of those things where, you know, like I actually, I still to this day, I still to this day have like, uh, they had a, a, you know, like I'm not like hyper religious or anything like that, but they like, you know, they made sure to give everybody a picture of Jesus because there was a picture of Jesus that got like ripped out of my grandmother's like, uh, like vanity drawer and was shut. It was, it was like in a tree, like literally like it cut into a tree and was just sticking out of a tree. So she went and got a bunch of copies of those to give them to people after, uh, after they survived. Uh, they actually got a they actually got a picture of them like uh, my grandmother getting a hug from I think Bill Clinton at the time or something like that. But we went down there 
and there really wasn't anything for us to do other than like hang out in like the hotel rooms and stuff like that that they had at the side because everything else was shut down right like everything was shut down you couldn't go anywhere originally we we're going to be going to like disney but they shut that out that we couldn't go right like most of even disney was like torn up from the floor up and we ended up uh we ended up uh sitting in a hotel room and my mom didn't really know what to do with me so what she ended up doing is she ended up taking me over to uh a flea market and i bought my first playstation one and a copy of final fantasy 7. and that was the and that was the spring break that i sent i sat there and all i did was play final fantasy 7. it was awesome oh it was so nice oh it was so great i mean the rest of it sucked but that was yeah that was crazy uh, not trying to humiliate, humiliate yourself for chat. I give you a 10 just for that. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. Uh, I think you're great, but kind of noticed that people love uh, love the full screen cam. Uh, but I but you did what you needed to do to show your stream uh, what it's about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I go back and forth, to be honest. I go back and forth. Gamer Origins. I don't know if it was necessarily like Gamer Origins more than any. Like, I was already like pretty heavy into gaming to begin with. Um, but I will say that like back then I was much more casual when it came to most games because like those were like Nintendo days, right? So like games weren't necessarily like, you know, games weren't necessarily all about like sitting there for hours and hours and hours and playing them and playing them and playing them. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of it was like repeat stuff. Like I still remember like most of the original Super Mario Brothers levels, like all of their secrets, all of the extra heart locations, all of that stuff. All of that stuff. I still remember all of it. I spent your spring break playing Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, that yeah, that was my first introduction into Final Fantasy. Actually, it was Final Fantasy VII, and then I played Final Fantasy VIII. Actually, the following spring break, if I'm not mistaken, it was awesome. Now they're an entire hobby. Yeah, yeah, like, uh, games were, like, so much more consumable back then. I, I don't really, I didn't really realize it until now, but, like, the thing is, is that, like, you know, you'd sit down, you play it for a little bit, and then you go and do something else. Um, where instead, like, now it's, like, you know, game for, like, six to eight hours anytime you're sitting down to playing something. I don't think that's necessarily, like, there's not necessarily nothing wrong with that, to be honest, but at the exact same time, like, I mean, whatever. You know what I mean? It's, Yeah different times different times all right let's see what else we got oh Silver Chain says it all. <laughs> Hashtag no regrets. Oh. The birth of a Redditor. The birth of a Redditor. Epiphone left. Le Epiphone Les Paul Arrows. <laughs> That's not an Aerosmith. That's Aeropostal. <laughs> I mean, I just got to take, dude, I'm sorry, man. Like, I got to take this stuff head on. I'd love to say next photo, but like, I, what the heck, what the heck? Yeah. Oh, man. Thought you were Bob Dylan. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, all right. You know what? I mean, so I was definitely that guy for sure. For sure. I, I like, I'm going to tell you right now, this guy right here, for sure, 100%, absolutely a white knight. Absolutely a white knight. I was for sure that guy, everything you could think about a Redditor, probably this guy right here. Everything you could think. Oh man. Mega simp, everything you could think of. Oh, it's all there, baby. It's all there. 
learning song learning songs expect you know especially just for the reason to impress women more than anything else there was no other reason for me to do it other than that um what else uh i'm trying to think like wonder wall 100 no actually you know what true story true true story man in this hat right here there was a girl that i was i had a major crush on in high school she was a senior and i was a sophomore and I had heard through the grapevine that nobody had asked her, uh, nobody had asked her if she, you know, wanted to go to, uh, uh, you know, if she wanted to go to prom. And I was like, there's no way. I'm like, how does nobody ask this? How does nobody ask her to prom? And like, technically you know, we were a smaller school. So I think sophomore year was still included, but sophomores had to be invited to, to go to prom. You couldn't just go, you know, you didn't, it wasn't just a, a you know, a, uh, a default in or anything like that right so um so i had heard i had heard that this girl was you know single obviously and she was looking for a date to prom or like you know nobody had asked her and it, and i think a lot more, like a lot of guys are probably just really intimidated by her more than anything else right so what i ended up doing is is i i talked to her friends and i asked them like what her favorite song was and back then, Jack Johnson was like the thing. Like, girls loved Jack Johnson. They loved Jack Johnson. So I learned Bubble Toes by Jack Johnson. And I can't sing or anything like that, so I didn't sing the song or anything. But um, I had played this. I had played the song for her. I had learned how to play the song, and I played the song for her. And, you know, asked her if she would take me to prom. And she did. She did. Now, mind you, at the exact same time, I, you know, I, I put myself in a really awkward position of being a very awkward guy that looked awkward, that said awkward things, that went out of his way for a girl that barely, n barely knew anything about him or anything like that. So for all intents and purposes, you know, you have this guy that like has a crush on a girl, but's never even said anything to her. And the next thing you know, he learns how to play your favorite song. It's kind of fucking creepy. It's a little creepy. Yes, legendary Riz. There's some solid Riz there, but it's also really creepy at the exact same time. Let's be fair. It was it was still very creepy at the exact same time. Uh, and, but she still accepted. So we got over that. <laughs> we, we, yes. Yeah, it was it was totally a pure charisma role than it was anything else or a luck role more than anything else. It worked. It worked nevertheless. It worked nevertheless. Then what happened? I went to prom and uh uh we yeah, we did the whole prom thing and see her again after. I saw her years later. Years later. Um and the funny thing is is that okay, you know, we'll continue the true story. So we went to prom. I ended up getting ditched after prom. There was after parties and stuff, but she didn't want to take me along. Uh, you know, guy that nobody really talks to, kind of a bit of an outcast, bit of a weirdo and a nerd. Uh, she's more of like a popular girl and whatnot. She really appreciated the sentiment, but she just kind of like, you know, uh, uh, you know, she still had her, her crowd and stuff like that that she was in. So she just went kind of went back and floated back to that whole thing in the first place, right? So... That's sad. That sucked. That hurt my feelings. It hurt my feelings. But more than anything, then after that, years later, and I'm talking probably like 10 years later or something like that, maybe, or eight years later or something, I, I saw her at a restaurant or at a party. I think, actually, I think it was like, I think it was during like hockey playoffs or something like that. And her and her mom and her friend were at a restaurant and she recognized me and they came up and they talked to me. And she had this, absolutely absolutely fantastic uh like moment where they came up and they just kind of like chatted with me a little bit and she told me about like how much she thinks back on that and really appreciated it and you know nobody's ever done anything that nice for her ever you know etc cetera, etc cetera. it's one of those things where like you kind of realize that like in the moment like you know it was, it was kind of like a little bit like creepy brain <laughs> but at the exact same time, like she ended up having somebody do something for her that was like the nicest thing that anybody's ever done. And she's always appreciated it. So I was like, well, that's kind of cool. So yeah, yeah, I was uh, at, at this point, I was 100% a Redditor. Yeah, I was full on Redditor for sure.
for sure. Yeah, I had my face. I had my face. This is me getting my first guitar. Look at that mullet. Look at that mullet. What do you guys think about that? What do you think about that? Nice guy trademark? Quite literally, yeah. Oh, I was for sure that guy. I'm not going to pretend like I wasn't. That was that was a phase that I feel like some guys... Uh, I, f I think that was a phase that like some guys go through at one point not all guys but some guys do where like you know like you, you you try oh man i understand you i'm not i'm different than other guys i'm super sensitive you don't understand you know it's so funny that you're trying to be so different just to be the same as a bunch of other dudes anyway uh how old were you at this time uh first guitar i would be like nine or ten Probably nine. Yeah, I'd probably say nine. Something right around there. Average Cody, thank you for the prime, man. Appreciate that. Yeah. I have no idea what happened to this guitar. It was absolutely garbage. It was just like a like a, it's super, super nice. This is uh this is one of my my mom's uh um uh really good friends, like high school friends that uh was in a band that you know we went and saw all the time. And uh, and he hooked me up with a guitar. You can't see the other guy in the background, uh, but the other guy in the background was like a band member, if I'm not mistaken. And ironically, what ends up happening after this is that my mom ends up getting me guitar lessons, right? So I go for guitar lessons and I started to, you know, learn how to play. And I really liked my guitar teacher. My guitar teacher was super cool, really nice guy. Um, he played video games and I always thought that was really cool. Uh, he really liked playing the Resident Evil games and we would play... Uh, motocross and uh, motocross games and stuff like that. Like that's those were his two things. He really liked playing Resident Evil and he liked playing uh, motocross games and stuff like that. So what he did uh, was uh, he started dating my mom. So, <laughs> so, so then he wasn't cool anymore. <laughs> so then he wasn't cool anymore. It went from cool to not cool anymore. Very quickly. It was a very fast turn. It was a very fast turn. Yeah. 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 No, I didn't like him after that. I didn't like him after that. He was like that cool older guy that was teaching me guitar and played video games and stuff. And I was like, man, this guy's, this guy's badass, you know? And also on top of that, like you kind of look up to him a little bit. Cause he's like single guy living by himself. All he does is play video games and work and, and play guitar and he's in a band. And I'm like, bro, this is everything that I want in my life. You know what I mean? Like the, the this is the role model. I mean, it probably really wasn't the best role model, but. You know, like you see that, like as a you know, as a young uh, you know, younger guy, you're like, oh man, this is this is where it's at, right? This is where it's at. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He flipped that on me pretty quick. He flipped that on me pretty quick. You describing how you met Mark? No, no, I'm definitely not describing how I met Mark. No, though. No. Wow, savage chat on YouTube. Chat is savage on YouTube. They're so much meaner than Twitch is. Twitch is so nice to me. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Your mom is listening. So we're all, oh, so are all the girls at the salon. Oh, God, no. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for now. You like women? I thought you were cool. <laughs> it is one of those women. It's like, oh, you like girls? That's stupid. <laughs> That's stupid. Yeah. Yeah. What did he do wrong? He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't do anything wrong. There we go. It's another mullet picture. Hard to see it. Hard to see it. Yeah. This is, uh, this is, this is life. By the way, this is life as the youngest child of a single mother. This is what it looks like. Matching t-shirts. 
Matt, uh, uh, you know, your, your haircut is constantly being changed. I'm not gonna lie, actually, I'm gonna be real. The, the, the mullet's kind of working here. I think I wore, I think I wore a mullet pretty well. I think I wore a mullet pretty well. You know what I mean? What's on the shelf in the background? Sega Genesis. That's what this is. It's hard to see, but I can tell the I can tell from these four pixels that this right here is a cartridge and this right here is the casing. That right there, my friends, is a Sega Genesis. That, my friends, is a Sega Genesis. Yeah, those are VHS tapes right there. Uh, that looks like Jungle Book. This is probably Bambi. Actually, the white one might be Jungle Book, if I'm not mistaken. You guys remember they had those cases? You know what I mean? They had like the, the plastic clamshell cases or the um, something like that. You know, the plastic clamshell cases or something. Yeah, these are all these are like Ninja Turtle movies down here. Uh, I think you even had like the Super Mario Brothers movie. Titanic. Probably. It's probably in there. Wasn't Titanic a two like two two set tape? I'm pretty sure it was. The white Disney clamshells. Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. The white Disney clamshells. You, you already know. You already know. Still have a bunch of them. Yeah. But you still have a Sega Genesis. I do. I do still have my Sega Genesis. I have my Sega Genesis and I have my Sega Genesis. I have my... Um, I think I still have an Atari Jaguar, N64, Sega Dreamcast, regular NES, but I ended up getting the, uh, I have the, um, oh, what is it? I have the, the top loader. I have the top loader instead of the, uh, instead of the front loader, because I don't, th I don't know if you guys remember this or not. Uh, for any of the people that are actually old enough to even remember this. But, um, the, I mean, the regular NES wasn't mine. It was my brother's. And, um, but they had a lifetime warranty on the original Nintendo. On the original front loader Nintendo, it had a lifetime warranty. So, if anything ever went wrong with it, you could just contact Nintendo and then they would send you and they would just send you a new one, basically, is how it would work. And, the front loader Nintendo stopped working like I, I don't even know man 15 years later or something like that 15 years or something and I ended up calling uh I ended up calling Nintendo and I was I don't know I, I don't remember how old I was when I actually called them but I called them and it was years later like the by this time they were already on the I think they were already on the GameCube at this point and I called them up and I was like, hey, you know, this front loader S or this front loader NES isn't working. And they're like, okay. And they just sent a sent us a top loader. That was it. Just sent it to us. No questions asked. And ended up getting it and then uh the new the dog bone. You guys remember the dog bone controller? Not the square controller, but the dog bone. The red and white Nintendo? Yeah. Yeah, the red and white Nintendo. I think mine still works. Uh if you smack it five times real hard. Yeah, you gotta blow on it a little bit as well. You got to blow on it a little bit as well. You can't just not, uh, you know what I mean? You got to take care of that thing. Actually, you don't really have to take care of it at all. I still have most of my games for it as well, too. I think the only ones that I don't have are like ones that I think people probably stole. Like I used to have the golden cassette for... I used to have the golden cassette for Zelda. But I don't, uh... Don't have that no more. Don't have that no more. Do you prefer emulation or collecting older games? Personally, I like playing the older games uh, as they were intended. Like I, like um, I've used the emulators in the past. Like I've used uh, what is it? Like I, I'm, I, I, I've, tr I mean, I maybe have used emulators. <laughs> uh, but there's something about the old school controllers, man. I don't know what to say about it. There's just something about the old school controllers that just hits different. That square controller for the original NES was sick. Still one of my favorite controllers of all time. 
fits really well in the hand. You know, you don't your hands don't get sweaty using it or anything like that. So good. So good. Playing on OG hardware feels good. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It does. There's something like tactile about it. The six button G uh, Genesis controller? Nah. That's definitely not where it was at. I was not a fan of the six button controller. I didn't see the point in it. Most games you played only used two buttons to begin with or directional plus buttons, right? So it didn't really make a whole lot of sense. I mean, 90% of the time, if I was playing on a Sega, I was playing what? I was playing Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic 2. Yeah, I was, yeah. Oh, I guess some fighting games did use it, didn't they? Honestly, I think my last two consoles were perfect controller by putting weights in it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I had to say there's like a perfect controller ever, I'd probably say, honestly, the Xbox controller. I, I actually don't mind the PlayStation controller, but I think the Xbox controller is just better overall. Even more so the 360 controller, but I, I think the Xbox One controller switch over was really good. GameCube is the GOAT. GameCube was a goaded console, not a goaded, not a goaded uh, controller, though. I don't really like the controller for it. But I tell you what, like one of my favorite, one of my favorite controllers of all time ever, ever was, um, was the Xbox 360 wired controller. I loved that thing. My second favorite controller, the Xbox 360, uh, the Xbox version of the Guitar Hero controller. That's my second favorite controller ever. The second, the, the, uh, Guitar Hero controller for Xbox. You guys know what I'm talking about? The one that was the uh, flying V? Oh, it looks kind of like that. But, I mean, it was a it was an explorer, I think. It was either an explorer or a destroyer. Looks like that. Yeah, it was an explorer. I loved that thing. It was like because the like the neck on it was like super super skinny, and the buttons were really close. So on like harder difficulties, I would just shred, shred. That's how, dude, I used to play, I used to play a ton of, uh, um, I used to play a ton of, um, I used to play a ton of, uh, Guitar Hero specifically because it was like the best, like, you're not going to learn how to play guitar from playing Guitar Hero, but you are going to, um, you are going to like get really good dexterity practice. You're going to get a lot of really good dexterity practice. It's very good for it. I would still suggest it today. Like, even though like I realize like games like that aren't really like very popular, but it's really good for finger dexterity, especially when you first start especially when you're first starting out because you just don't have the finger strength to be able to timing. Yeah, timing's a really, yeah, it's really good for timing too. Um, but uh, you just don't have the finger strength to be able to make chords. That was like my biggest problem when I first started playing guitar is that I just didn't have the finger strength to make chords. So every single time I went to go to try to play something, I couldn't play anything because of the fact that like, I, you know, I just didn't have the strength to like actually hold chords down. Bar chords, especially because bar chords are strong. Those are hard. That, those take a lot of practice to be able to get down. I still don't like playing bar chords, to be honest with you. <laughs> that 70s cut, rocking the chin beard. Yeah. Yeah, look at that fucking hair, dude. Look at that hair. That's what my hair would look like if I let it grow. Yeah, dude, that's you. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. Shaggy with the guitar. Yeah. Starting a cro crowd uh, a mosh real time. No, like look at the people in the background. This is what this is. People want to try to pretend like metal shows are crazy. This is what metal shows really look like. Let's be, let's be real. <laughs> let's be real. Like we can try to pretend, but it's mostly just a bunch of people that are incredibly edgy standing around holding with their, with their arms crossed like this. We're just listening to the music. And then they go and then they go to like school. They went to like school the next, the next day or the next week or whatever, or tell their friends afterwards about how crazy it was. Oh my God, read that crazy show. It was so crazy. 
It was uh, wearing sandals. Good point. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, two of them two of them are wearing sandals in the background. I just noticed that. <laughs> it's really hard to get a mosh pit going. It is. It is. I like this is the this is the the vocalist right here and he he would like push people around and stuff like that. But yeah. Yeah. This is me wearing pants that were way too big for me. This is me where I also was you know at this point i'd pretty much reached like my max height which is like almost about almost six feet right and i probably weighed 125 pounds maybe 125 soaking wet let it grow need to update that pick i have the locks now long yeah uh please tell me you had a boss metal zone i did uh i did but i switched out to get a um which ones do i have now i don't know I use a tube screamer. I use tube screamers now instead because it doesn't really make a whole lot of uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to try to you know like uh, like bef like the problem is with like those metal zone pedals is that you just get like a really like high high tenor sound out of it not tenor uh, like high like very high treble sound out of it you couldn't really get a whole lot of like bass out of it and I wanted more bass out of it because more times than not when we played um you know we just didn't have a bassist bassists were super hard to come by. Nobody ever wants to play bass. Everybody wants to be a guitarist or a singer. And then, uh, and then you know, and then you get lucky and find a good drummer. We had an awesome one. We had an awesome one. Ellie, thank you for the five gifted subs. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Davey 504 changed the game. That's actually really true. Really true. I'm, at, I'm like, it's really cool to have somebody that's like a content creator that's like really popular for making like stuff based on bass because then you get actually, then you actually get like more people like into bass. And the funny thing is, is that like for years now, like still even today, like, like, um, like bass is still like regarded like the worst. You know what I mean? It's still the one that people look down on the most. Which is sad. It's sad that it's that way, but it's been that way for a long time. Most nobody wants to be the bassist. Everybody wants to be something else. Bass just feels good to play. Bass is awesome, man. Bass is, bass is awesome. I would play bass, to be honest with you. I just don't own a bass guitar, and I don't want to. I don't feel like going and buying all the equipment to play bass. You know what I mean? Bass is also cheaper too. <laughs> bass is also like the cheapest option outside of being a vocalist. You know? Yeah slap like now that's right that's right so uh crazy thing actually is that um i don't know like we'll see if there's like another another picture that's in here but um dude the, the what the, the crazy thing is is that like back at this time when we started when we started playing like shows and going around and we formed this band um when we formed the band and this is so long ago now but um we I remember like we first started out playing it like shows that we shouldn't have been playing at. At this point in time also, by the way, this guy right here, if you're wondering what does this guy do outside of play guitar, he plays World of Warcraft. That's what he does. This guy right here plays guitar in his basement, plays World of Warcraft, uh, Wrath of the Lich King. No. Is this Wrath or is this Kata? This might be Cataclysm. I can't really remember. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Georgie. Um, and then, uh, and then, and then he plays shows with his band. And I think close, like closer to like this time is when I probably really started stop playing video games. And all I ever did was like really just like the band stuff more than anything else. And we started playing at like local pubs and bars and stuff like that. And we really, we shouldn't have been because we were too young to be there in the first place, right? And, but you can get in as long as you're an entertainer and you have somebody that's over the age that's in your band. There's like a weird loophole in, uh, in some states that allow you to be able to go in and play, right? And one of the things that I think is really cool is that, uh, or not really cool, a funny story about that is, is that we got offered to play our first paid gig, right? We were super stoked, super stoked. We're going to, so we're going to play this paid gig and... I thought it was weird because I'd never heard of the place before. And um, the reason why is because it was a biker bar. So we go to this biker bar and we set up 
And we noticed that like the other bands are like way older than we are. Way older than we are. It might have been Miss. I think you're probably right. Might have been Miss. Uh, the other bands that were there were like way older than we are. And, you know, I'm turning in like somebody else is the one that got us the show. And I told them, I'm like, I don't know if we should be playing here. Like these guys look like rock bands, not, you know, we were a metalcore band. Like we were playing like, like one of our, like we, like, you know, we play, we only played like one or two covers, but outside of that, all the other songs were original. And like one of the covers that we would play was, uh, uh, confined by as I lie dying. So it's like. Every single, like, I don't know if these guys, like, we look at the crowd, and the crowd's, like, all older people, and I'm like, I don't know if these feet, I don't think this is gonna go well, guys. So we go up, and we just go ahead, um, was it, was it the bar from Terminator 2? Yeah, actually, it's pretty close. <laughs> That's actually kind of close. So we, so we went up there, and we played, and we played two songs, and we got booed off stage. It was the first time we ever got booed off of somewhere, and that was just because it was the, it was an older crowd that didn't like that kind of music, and it was too heavy for them. So like the bar owner comes up and says, sorry, this music's a little bit too heavy for this place. And I'm like, for a biker bar, this music's too heavy for a biker bar. A bunch of people wearing leather vests, having motorcycles outside and chains and shit. Like, bro, what is this? What is this? Should have played Freebird? Exactly. I'm like, okay, I'm like too heavy for this crowd. And then like the next, the next band goes up. And like, don't get me wrong, like they're not as heavy as we are, but they weren't like that far off, but they were fine. It was just super weird. And then the guy that was supposed to pay us for the show kept dodging us out. And I think for some odd reason, he thought that like, because we were younger, we were just going to kind of like let it go and just leave. And for the most part, a couple of our band members tried to, but I tell you what, like I was a dog with his teeth sunk in. I wasn't letting it go. I chased that guy all around that place. I, and I finally, uh, like, I kept asking people, where is he? I, oh, I don't know, man. I think he left. I think he went to go get this. I think it went. And I finally was like, you know, I, I got fed up. I went into the bathroom and I caught him in the bathroom. And I was like, hey, give us our money. Oh, well, you know, you guys didn't get a full set. I'm like, you're the one that booked us. You're the one that knew what we sounded like. You're the one that brought us here. It led us to getting booed off stage. Give us our money. Oh, well, man. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, we're not leaving until you give it to us. He paid. He paid. He paid. Mind you, there was like somebody else that was in the bathroom at the time that like intervened as well. That was just like a random passerby. It wasn't even one of the band members. It was just like a random guy. And he was like, there's just some random dude at a urinal. And he goes, hey, man, I'm just going to say... That's really screwed up. <laughs> He's like, all right, fine. And he, and he gets his, uh, and he hands over the money. So good on that guy. Good on that. Good on that guy for, uh, for, for helping out a little bit. But like that kind of stuff happens all the time. That kind of stuff happens all the time. W your owner, bro. Yeah, exactly. T1000 stepped in. What if he was a T1000 bathroom justice? That's exactly what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, buy him a beer. Yeah. So it was, uh, that was an interesting time. That was an interesting time. Oh, dude. I had, I had Ninja Turtle everything. But look, look what you can see in the background. Look at that bad boy. Oh, it's hard to see. I'm sitting. I'm sitting right here in the front of it. I'll drag it. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, rolled up controller, squared controller. I recognize that black stripe, white top, and gray bottom anywhere. I recognize that anywhere. I can recognize that anywhere. I can guarantee I know what's in it too. A 100% guarantee it's probably Super Mario Brothers 3. Dang, Sega and a Nintendo? Hey, man, you know what? Like sometimes you got to live your best life, and that was the life that I chose to live was my best life. Look at that television, though. Look at that TV. Good old days? You already know, man. For sure, good old days. Holy. Holy. Look at that TV, baby. That's a real TV right there. Master System. Yeah, yeah, it's an NES and a Master System.
Um, let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else in the background that I can see. I got Jenga. I can see that this is Jenga in the background. <laughs> Days of Christmas past. Yeah, it's just too bad. I don't even know. What is this? This is Ninja Turtles. Donatello. Donatello. I mean... Oh, no, that's Leonardo. Yeah. Yeah, I was the Leonardo kid. I was Leonardo kid. It's pretty obvious, right? Like, you got Leonardo action figure in the box. Leonardo chair in the background. Leo was where it's at, man. Blue was always, like, one of my favorite colors as well. Yeah, enhance. 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 That long hair did it, man. That long hair did it. I tell you what. That TV. I know, man. I know. Part of me, like, what? There's just something so tactile about it. There's something so attractive. Like, the thing is, is that, like, today, like, TVs, TVs, like, they're, now they're just, like, so fuck, like, screens are so common nowadays that Raph, man, every, every edgelord thinks Raph, Raph is best. What was our obsession, obsession with TVs on the floor? I don't know, but also at the same time, like, TVs back then were actually furniture pieces. TVs have no personality now. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, this has personality. This is a centerpiece. The mahogany. The fine finish. The, uh, the, 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 the curved edges going in towards the bubbled screen. That's the Radiation King TV. I don't, the TVs really have radiation? If so, then that explains a lot about my eyesight. And some massive, massive closet atta uh, attachment, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I get it now. Like, people want to like buckle TVs to like a wall and stuff like that. And like, I, part, I mean, yeah, everything's like super modern now. It's all, like super modern design and whatnot like that. TVs back then were tanks. That too. TVs back then were tanks. That thing right there, I wouldn't even. I couldn't even tell you how heavy that thing is. That's at least 100 pounds. I'll tell you that right now. That's heavy. Ain't going nowhere. Ain't gonna break. I will say that too. That's the other thing as well. Is that like TVs back then were always like... Nothing back in the day was like designed to break. Everything was designed to like... You know... Uh, survive like a nuclear holocaust or something like that. Built for life. Yeah, quite literally. And most of those, a lot of that stuff still even works today, which is, which is crazy. Actually crazy. No one can steal it too. I never even thought about that. Who's going to try and steal something like that? You're not going to get very far. You're going to need a, you need a proper vehicle to be, you're going to need a proper truck or a trailer to be able to load it, to get rid of it in the first place. You know what I mean? So like, what are you, what are you going to do? And they could be repaired. That's also true. I, I can like TVs today actually be repaired the same way. It's tiring saying capitalism bad, but man, we here we are. Um, I don't even really think it's like a capitalism thing more than it is just, just the nature of like how technology has changed. You know, we we value we value different things today than we used to. Where like today we value convenience more than we value probably anything else, right? Like I want things to take up the least amount of space as possible. I want things to be easier to use i want them to uh you know have, use cheaper materials so that they're more affordable and things like that so like there's a lot of different stuff yeah it's it's much easier just to buy a new tv today than it is to uh to get a tv repaired like there's really no reason to do so and also like the depreciating value of tvs to begin with is like crazy crazy are you kidding me like i like the tv that i have right now i bought for like probably $2,500, maybe five or six years ago. And that TV is probably worth like $200 now. Which is crazy because like it does 4K and it has like 120 refresh rate. Like it's not a bad TV, but it's like, but is it 40,000 K? It's like, there's nothing even in 400,000 K. <laughs> My eyes can't even see that. <laughs> Why do I want it? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. My CRT still works for my PlayStation and PS2 and Wii. That's awesome. 
that's also the other thing too like now that i realize when like people are talking like um if you really wanted to play like a regular nintendo like legit especially if you wanted to play duck hunt i think you have to use this you have to use a uh a crt otherwise it can't detect the the like magnetism of the screen or the infrared on the screen because it doesn't work with flat screens if i'm not mistaken uh, you might have to like fact check me on that but i'm pretty sure that the light guns uh light guns don't work on the flat screen yeah 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 yeah, I think it's like the infrared in the uh, in the light gun, if I'm not mistaken. Dude, Nintendo original Nintendo had like wild accessories as well. What was the gauntlet called? The G glove, power glove. That's what it was. Power glove, right? Wasn't there a cartoon show that was based on the power glove? I vaguely remember watching Nintendo Power Hour back in the day, and I remember watching Link the super mario brothers television show and then there was a there was i think that there was another another show that the wiz is that what it was called they also had the virtual boy i had a virtual boy captain nintendo i think it, i think that's what it was i think it was something like that i think you're pretty close wizard that movie no no there was a tv show there was a tv show that used the power glove uh, so a lot of people don't really remember this, but back in the day, there used to be a uh, there used to be a running cartoon series on Sundays. It was called po Nintendo Power Hour, and they had a uh, Legend of Zelda television show. They had the Super Mario Brothers television show. They had um, I'm sh pretty sure there was a Kirby television show, and then there was also I, I think you're right, Captain Nintendo was what it was called. If I'm not mistaken. New LG o uh, OLED cost me twenty nine or two two hundred ninety nine. Oh, twenty twenty seven K, twenty seven thousand dollars American. How does that make sense? Captain N, the game master. That's what it was. There you go. I like how we were just like putting together a bunch of random words, and none of them actually ever came to came to be what they were supposed to be in the first place. That's too good. That's too good. You're taking me back. I used to watch those. They're still so bad. No, I think the Super Mario Brothers television show was really good. Uh, the Zelda television show was terrible, though. The Zelda te television show was absolutely horrible. But the Super Mario Brothers television show was actually pretty good. Outside of the live action cuts that they would do, where all of a sudden it was like they had this really weird thing where like at the beginning, middle, and I think end of the episodes for the Super Mario Brothers television show, they would cut to Mario and Luigi and like their people, but it'd be more like a Seinfeld skit in the middle of each, like in the middle of the each, uh, each episode. The, Zel the Zelda one never made it over to Germany, so I never saw it. Oh, that sucks. Excuse me, princess. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was funny. It was funny. I don't remember what channel it was on. It might have been PBS or something like that back in the day. Uh, if you don't watch the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, you're going uh, you're going to turn into a Goomba. Yeah, probably. Probably, yeah. All right, what else we got? Let's see. Crazy story. Crazy story from this picture. So this is this is a boy and his dog. This is a boy and his dog. Uh that's Max. That's Max. That's my first dog. Uh blue tick, black lab. Um best pup ever. Ever. Best dog ever. Uh, I tried to get a dog, a, a couple dogs after this. None of them ever really worked out. I did, I mean I I ended up. The the uh the other best dog I've ever had was Sephiroth. Uh that dog was great. That dog was absolutely fantastic. Super loyal, listened really well. It was a, a um a Malamute is what he was. Uh, but that was like years 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 later, right? Um but this is my first dog, Max. And uh Max. This is uh, like okay, so I want to say 
you know, dogs grow pretty quickly, right? So like the next year when, when Max is about like a year old, um, uh, my parents couldn't find me. They looked all over the place. They were trying to figure out who the hell I was. I, th I don't I think they even called the police trying to find me and they couldn't find me. Searched all over the house, started looking through the neighborhood, driving, ar driving around the neighborhood, yelling my name, looking for me, couldn't find me, couldn't find me, couldn't find me. And then, like, I, I want to say, like, I, I think my mom told me, like, hours later or something like that. They just get a random idea. They're like, where's the dog at? And they go and they check. And it's, and I'm asleep with the dog in the doghouse. In the backyard. 100% boy and his dog moment. 100% a boy and his dog moment. Such a good dog. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I rocked mullets for a long time now that I think about it. I rocked mullets for a long time. Look at that weave, man. I got some hair. I got some hair. My God. I think that was like in our sunroom or something, maybe. I'm not really too sure. That doesn't really like the place that we're at doesn't really like look very familiar. I don't know where that is. Like a lot of like a lot of these pictures, a lot of these pictures my mom sent me are like mostly like mullet pictures. Look at this. I'm just one of the girls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just one of the girls. <laughs> what is this? Was your mother a uh, country music fan or something? Uh, I didn't think mullets were around in the 90s. Uh, yeah. I mean, she was just like, she's a, she's a hairstylist. So it just in general, anything that she can do to hair, she will, she would do. You know what I mean? I don't think it had anything to do with the time frame, but just like, you know, yeah. Yeah. How many cute stories have I missed? Too many. You were a guinea pig? I was 100% a guinea pig. Yeah. Like, look at that. By the way, this right here is... Um, this right here is somebody that is born with... Uh, born with Riz. This, was, this, is what, this is what it looks like when you come out looking like this. So, you know. Them's the days. Them's the days. Yeah, like here, this is this one too. <sighs> right there, man. Like this, this guy right here, he's coming to start something. I'm like, I'm like the, like I, I feel like I look like I'm like the, in, like I'm in the Big Lebowski or something like that. But also in diapers. Yeah, back up, son. Back up, son. <laughs> like I, I, I look like right now, I look like somebody just said the wrong thing. What do you mean we're not going to McDonald's? Look at those shades. What do you mean we're not going to McDonald's? What do you mean I ain't getting my nuggies? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Mr. Steve with your girl? Yeah. Yeah, that's what it's, that's what it looks like. Oh. If I had to take a wild guess. If I had to take a wild guess, I want to say this is probably so this is me. And this is probably like my birthday, most likely. I don't know how old I would have been. Maybe sixth grade. Yeah, I'd probably say like sixth grade or fifth grade. This is when I had highlighted tips. I had frosted tips back here. Yeah. Did your mom? Yeah, 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 yeah. My mom dyed my hair. 
Yep, she 100% dyed my hair. Yeah. Um, I was on a traveling soccer team, or a, I think I was a, I think it was a traveling soccer team. If I'm not mistaken. Probably 10 or 12. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Then again, I mean, I've stayed baby-faced most of my life, so, you know. Uh, yeah. But one of the things that I can tell you from back in is like, so I was I was always tall, right? Like I I grew up faster than than most kids did, so I was always taller than everybody else. And one of the things that I uh like I was always like sports teams always wanted me, whether that was like a traveling team or whether or not that was um uh you know like the the school's team and stuff like that. However, I was like the least coordinated child ever. Uh, in many ways, I still am the least coordinated person ever and what ended up and what ended up happening is is that i would get onto sports teams and i would be god awful god awful terrible literally the worst i um give you guys an example uh back from that time i made the basketball team and i never played a single game after the first time that i played because what ended up happening is I, um, uh, hold on one second. Let me switch back to this real quick. Um, because what ended up happening is, is, uh, in one of our first games, they put, they, they had me, per they put me into the game and I had never played, you know, in a, in a competitive game before. So when I got in, like my nerves got to me. And I think this is like one of the things that like really, really sucks for kids growing up. You know, I'm going to rant about this, actually. I'm going to rant about this. So one of the things that I have, an issue that I have with middle school sports specifically is that you have middle school sports coaches that are trying to be ultra competitive when they don't need to be. Because really, like, if you're going to get competitive, get competitive in high school. Like, obviously, you want to try to make these kids good so they have a good chance when they get into high school if the sport is what they're going to try to play. But the problem is, is that when you have these coaches that are getting, like, hyper competitive in, like, middle school sports, the problem is, is that, like, kids never get over nerves. And because you, you never give them the chance to get over nerves. So to give you guys an example of it, when I was at this age, what ended up happening to me is I got thrown into a game for my first game and the nerves got me and when I got past the ball I just fucking threw it I just threw it it was just like a reaction like a a, a, a panic like panicked reaction because the minute that they're like you know oh you're up and I'm like uh 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 uh, uh. even though I've been to practice I've, I've practiced the drills and all that good stuff I just I panicked in the moment they threw me the ball my heart heart was beaten out of my chest even when I was up on this show for OTK, like my heart's like beating out of my chest. It's like one of those things where it's like, I really wish I look back in those days and it's like, that was the opportunity for, you know, uh, for me to get over nerves. And it's like one of the biggest weaknesses that kids have when they're younger and like not all kids have it, but some kids do. And when you don't get the chance to overcome it, you never do. So back then, like, I, like when I got thrown into situations and I didn't know how to react to it in the moment. You know, I just panicked. And in that moment, I panicked. I threw the basketball. Everybody in the entire stadium laughed because I tried to basically half court a shot and didn't make it, obviously. Uh, you know, my dad made fun of me for it and a bunch of other people did too. And it's like, well, that doesn't help. And then after that, I never got put back into another game, not until like the end of the season or like the basically literally the end of the season. And it's like, that's not helpful for kids to be able to overcome that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like that's that's really hard. That's really hard to overcome something like that. What about the soccer team? Soccer team was a little bit different. Um soccer it's easy it's easier for you to get lost on a soccer field. Um I was not very good at soccer. I was decent at passing. I could not shoot for to save my life. So I was a defense so I played defense. Um but more than anything where I found my value as a soccer player was that one I was never in the spotlight. So I the, the nerves never got to me. Right. And then two, the other thing was, is that I was really skilled at um, smack talk. So I would just bother the forwards when they came up. So when they came up to shoot, I would just start saying some random stuff to them that would distract them enough that they would just lose control of the ball and I would just take it from them um, or something else like that. I once got a penalty shot in a game because I. Uh, 
I once got a penalty shot in a game because a guy clotheslined me during a soccer game. <laughs> the trash talker IR in IRL game. Yeah, yeah. Why would I do it in a video game? I'd rather do it in a uh, uh, a good coach will not let you get lost. Yeah, but you know, they have players that they let get lost. Like a, a lot of the times, especially when it's like younger kids, um, I think it's less so less so in high school. In high school, they want to try to make they, they want to try to take advantage of all the all the uh, um, all the teammates they possibly can. They want to try to you know even the guys that are like the least skilled, they want to try to give them some semblance of value because if they give them some semblance of value, then it brings the value of the team up, you know, a, as a total, right? So, um, but the problem is, is that like when you're talking like middle school, uh, middle school and junior high. Yeah, coaches don't really care. Like whoever, like the if you're not the cream of the crop, you're not getting the attention that you need. Simple as that. It's nice to see a guy who's down to earth. You're awesome, doing an awesome job. Just keep it up. Thanks, man. Appreciate it, Jerry. <clears throat> you're that MF that I had to deal with, weren't you? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I do that stuff all the time. It's just it's one of the like the thing is like I just didn't have the coordination to be able to shoot very well. I I could never pick my like foot spot with my with my with my shots so <coughs> so yeah so my my best uh my best weapon was my mouth How, have you ever watched uh Ayoshi? no i've been watching i watched blue lock though i've been like steadily waiting for blue lock for its next season blue lock is so good I am one of the very few people, I'm not very few, there's probably a ton of people that say stuff like this, but like one of the things that I will say is that uh, like sports anime do not get the love that they deserve. Everything nowadays is um, isekai and there's not enough sports anime and I want more sports anime. I'm petitioning for it right now at this very moment. Blue Lock and... Um, uh what else there's a basketball one that i watched that i really liked uh there was uh I'm trying to think what else there's a lot of really good sports anime you know what the funny thing is even that like goofy girl like uh what was it uh birdie that golf anime was actually like bomb like, it was actually really good. Ayaku? I mean, obviously, that's like the most goaded sports anime of all time. Which, by the way, where has that been? That's been out of circulation for so long now. It's so, like... You would love Ayoshi? All right, well, I'll watch it. Remember Sailor Moon? Yeah, actually, we'll talk about that. I'll embarrass myself with another picture and I'll talk about that. So check out this do. Nice little bowl cut going on right there. Man, I really transformed like look wise over the years. Like my face changed a lot. My face changed a lot. Like, I don't even think I even look like this kid. Like, is that even me? Oh, in the eyes. I can still see it in the eyes. Squinny. Squinny basted. I do be looking like that. Am I, am I oh, Blue Lock is the best sports anime since high. I wholeheartedly agree with you, Georgie. I wholeheartedly agree with you. Yeah. I mean, there's some there's some good ones, but... Uh, there's some good ones, but... Uh, did you watch the Kingdom Come trailer 2 yet? Uh, no, I have not. I'll probably do that a little bit later, maybe. There's only a handful... That's worth a mention. Yeah, that's also true. That's a, that, well, that's what I'm talking about. Like, there's far, there's not enough sports anime. There should be more sports anime, and there's not. And I don't understand why there isn't. Like, and the funny thing is, like, people love sports to begin with. It's such an easy crossover for so many people, and it would actually probably make a lot more anime, I like, easier to digest for a broader audience if they stop doing, if they like, stop with all the isekai and you know, start doing more like sports related stuff. But because uh, here's like, you could even do like. Who's to say you can't do an isekai sports anime? anime? Where's that at? Who's to say that you can't do a, uh, uh, you know, a uh, uh, power level uh, sports anime? I think that's like one of the really cool things that I really like about Blue Lock 
is that like everybody's technique in blue lock is almost kind of like it's a Jojo power. You guys get that vibe from it? That's what it makes me feel like. Football anime? Yeah, it's for soccer. For soccer, yeah. Yeah. I mean, who's like, believe me, I'm definitely not the first person that would think to myself that, oh man, a, uh, um, a volleyball anime would be my favorite anime of all time. Like one of my favorite anime of all time, but it is. It is a men's volleyball anime. One of my favorite. So every manga about this guy sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So ironically, somebody brought up Sailor Moon. So like this picture right here, back in the day, this kid right here, this little fucking shit right here, this little fucking little demon, this little demon of a child right here. Look at those eyes. Look at those soulless eyes of a monster of a child. There was a girl that was in my class that I used to say, I used to make fun of her because all the things that she ever had, like all the things that she had were Sailor Moon. Like all she had, yeah, I know exactly, haunting. Look at that, like, yeah. Need to put on some like horror music for this. This kid right here, he used to make fun of a classmate all the time. He used to make fun of her all the time for, for watching Sailor Moon because all she had was all this like Sailor Moon stuff. She had Sailor Moon pens, a Sailor Moon purse. She had a Sailor Moon binder. She had a Sailor Moon everything. And we used to make fun of her all the time. Me and, me, and my, uh, me and my buddy Tyler used to make fun of her all the time. Bullies, absolute bullies, middle school child bully. And um, ironically, that same child Also, watch Sailor Moon. Because <laughs> it was on right before Dragon Ball Z. It was on right before Dragon Ball Z. What was I supposed to do? Not watch it? <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, to do justice to myself, okay? I only watched it. I only watched it for who were the, the the two girls? The two girls that weren't like a part of like the main three. Was that Saturn and Mercury? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I had I <laughs> begrudgingly Sailor Goon. <laughs> Uranus, thank you. Yes, Uranus and um, uh, Pluto or Mercury. I can't remember. It was like the, it was like, I think they were like sisters, weren't they? Or something like that. They were like the two extra characters that weren't a part of like the main, uh, the main three. They're the only ones that I liked. <laughs> only watch Sailor Moon for the chicks. <laughs> Based. Based. I think you're close. Yeah, it's something like that. Something like that. Big brain move. Yeah, I know. What could I say? What could I say? This is hard because I can't really like make this like a high quality image, sadly. I think this is like the highest quality that you're going to get this. I don't know why it's so small. I think it's like double compressed. You did change a lot? Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, that's what I said. I changed a lot. Yeah. By the way, you can't really see it very well, but this necklace right here, right there, that's a gear from a Gears of War statue. 
I was a big Gears boy. I was a big Gears of War fan. That's all I did. I played Gears of War and that's all I ever played. I didn't do anything else. I played Gears for years. Probably Gears of War 1, 2, and 3. And then I think I fell off around 4, if I'm not mistaken. Your 70s, your 70s broccoli hair can't compete with this cut. What can I say? What can I say? You look way cooler in this picture. Yeah. Did Gears change your lift too? Or change, or change my life? Yeah, I guess it did. This game changed my life. That's what I should say. I'll do a Gears of War video and say this game changed my life. It gave me the confidence to be a real man. It gave me the, it gave me the role models that I needed. It gave me the role models that I needed. Gears of War 2 multiplayer was fire. Yes, it was. I was also very good, too. Like, to be fair, I was very good at Gears. I was like, you give me a... Um, uh, you give me a sniper and put me on canals. I'm cracking heads. All you got to do is just tell me where they are. The general direction. Actually, Mark, Mark will back me up on this. There were, there were, there's a point where Mark could literally yell out to me because Mark and I used to play Gears of War all the time. He'd yell out to me. He'd be like, left side. And he'd just be like, pop. Right side, pop. Oh, so satisfying. So satisfying. Oh, I loved it so much. That was like the one thing that made Gears of War so fantastic of a video game. It really was the headshot pop. Like, that was the most satisfying sound effect to ever add to a video game headshot. And I don't think any other game has ever tried to replicate it ever since then, if I'm not mistaken. Like, some, some games will have, like, a crack, but not that pop. Not that pop and crunch that you would get from Gears of War. And even still, uh... Like, I, I'd probably say that the next best one would be maybe the uh, Happy Birthday Skull from Halo 3. The Happy Birthday Skull from Halo 3 was also really good, too. The pop. Yay! <laughs> so good. Red Dead Redemption 2 had exploding, but it doesn't have the same, same as Gears. Yeah, I mean, like... like Head exploding is cool and all, but like that pop, dude. That pop is just so good. I need to go back. I need like chiller music. It's too loud. Pop is so good. Xbox Live was savage. Many people, many people's souls were crushed. Who are you telling? I was out there crushing souls. You, it was eat, it was eat or be eaten. Kill or be killed. It was a rough time. Like Ridge Racers loading screen minigame. Oh yeah, I forgot all about that. I mean, Gears of War is just an iconic game just because it went places that like no other game like would dare to go at the time. Like most games were like still like, you know, you'd have some like crazy like gore and stuff like that. But for the most part, like a lot of games didn't really like get to that, get too far into a lot of that stuff. What's really cool about this picture right here and this show right here is, and this is really only going to depend on whether, like, you know, you're somebody that really likes metal music and you have a background in it and stuff like that. But this show right here, uh, we got invited to, uh, we got invited to play, and um, we got to open. For, we didn't have any background on who else was really playing at this show. We just were kind of somebody that got slid in last minute, and we ended up opening for Ice Nine Kills. And oh my god, uh, um, I can't remember the name. Ohio is for lovers. Um, Somebody help me here. Somebody help me. Hawthorne Heights. Thank you. Yes. Ice Nine Kills in Hawthorne Heights. 
it was like one of those wild moments where you walk in and like by the way this is before this is before ice nine kills is like a major band like ice nine kills is massive now like they're huge they're they're actually they're probably i would actually say that ink is probably the biggest metalcore band i would say ink is probably the biggest metalcore band now because if you really think about it, like they bled into like the mainstream in a way that like, I don't think any other band has, but that's just because they've done like their horror albums and stuff like that, which are fantastic by the way. But back then when we played with them, they were still nobody. I was way more into Silverstein. Yeah, Silverstein was really good too. But it was, it was just cra like, it was crazy. Like uh, um, specifically being able to play with Hawthorne Heights was just a, like a massive W. Like, that was just sick. That was sick. Um, playing with uh, Haste the Day was another one that was really cool. That was a lot of fun. I don't even know if I even have pictures of that show anymore. That was a lot of fun. That was really cool, actually. That one was actually at a church, which, by the way, I'll tell you guys this right now. As, like, somebody that played in a, did, you know, did a ton of, like, you know, local and, you know, regional touring and stuff like that, churches were the best place to play ever. Ever. Because they almost always serve food. <laughs> they almost always serve food. Haste the Day, nice. Yeah, Haste the Day was an absolute blast to play with. They were really nice guys, too. I think that's one of the other things that I, I think... And it's probably not true for every band that's out there, but the vast majority of the bands that I came into contact with, nine times out of ten, were, like, the nicest guys ever. Like, literally the nicest guys ever. Uh, Ice, Nine's, Ice Nine Kills was super nice. Um, Haste the Day... Let their their drummer let our drummer use his kit because he forgot like some of his uh some of his equipment um and then they invited us back to eat spaghetti and we had spaghetti and ha and hung out and that was really cool um and uh it's because metalcore gets all of your aggression out maybe maybe it's probably something like that i i, I don't know yeah i guess so i don't i guess it's it's like one way to one way to get your uh uh, one way to get your, um, you know, get your, get your guns running. You know what I mean? And just kind of get it out of your system for the most part and then just kind of move on from it. But, um, I mean like a lot of the time, like back then, like realize that like Christian metal core was very popular, right? That was like the most popular and most people didn't even like it because it was Christian. They just liked it because it was just music and they liked the music regardless of the message. Um, though I think like people do kind of realize that like the music has a positive message. So it kind of like gives it like a, you know, a different kind of undertone, if that makes any sense. And, um, you know, that was really cool. Christian metalcore. Yeah. A lot of bands were like that back in the day. I mean, like, I mean, uh, one of the biggest, one of the biggest metalcore bands still going right now. One of the biggest metalcore bands, uh, that's still going right now. Um, August burns red. They're a Christian metalcore band. I don't know if they still use like, Norma Jean, yep. Norma Jean's another really good example. Yeah. So there's a, there, there's a, like, and yeah, so a lot of the times you'd play in churches and stuff like that. Yeah, As LA Dying's another great example. Norma Jean, um, uh, for, for today, for, for today was more on the death, I don't know if they were like death core. I don't know. They were awesome though. Four today had some like sick riffs and drum beats. They were all over the place with some of their stuff. Amazon Prime is offering Fallout 76 for free on Xbox. Why wouldn't it be free already on Xbox to begin with? It shouldn't it be on Game Pass. Nickelback is where it's at for Metalcore. I Mark, I don't even know why I give you mod. I really have no idea. Why would I? I have no idea why I would do that to you. You're such a such a problem. This one is actually before the last one. So this one, this one, this one was a couple years before that. I still have that strap. I think I still use that strap. Yeah, that's still the strap that I use. That's still the same strap that I use. I still that's still the guitar that I have. There's a black guy. I'm gonna try that. Black one. It's my favorite one. Absolutely loved it. 
Absolutely love that guitar. Dot fret markers. Yeah, what about it? I mean, but at the same time, you also got to realize too that like this is like a starter guitar at the same time, right? Like these are like, this guitar right here is I think maybe like 300, 400 bucks at most or something like that. This is just like a basic Ibanez RG series. Nothing, uh, nothing, nothing fancy about it. I've, this been, the one that I have, like this, this is the same one that I still have right now, but this one's been upgraded a lot over the years. I've done a lot of different things to it. It needs, I think I still want to kind of get a new neck for it at one point, but it has, uh, it has like EMG pickups and a couple other things that I put into it. But a lot of my equipment, a lot of my equipment's still the same equipment from back then. Look at the trip pants in the background. See these? You guys know about that. Most people didn't wear this anymore, but you know, there's still a few, there's still a few remnants out there. Jinko jeans. I was probably wearing those in the soccer picture. Probably. I could see that. For sure. I could see that. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this dude down here. He's he's losing it. He's losing it down here. This is so good. This dude right here is like actually losing his mind. He's on the he's about he's about to like kiss the ground. God, I was so skinny back then. I was so tan too, though. I was a beach bum. I was a big time beach bum. What's up, Wolfart? I wonder if there's a way that I can. I can't do it from here. Where can I do it from? Probably go here. Let me fix this real quick. I don't even know how to do that. I'll have to figure out how to do that at some point then. Let me close that. Get it up anymore. Uh, you look what, more handsome with some meat on your bones. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. This is great, Rock On. Yeah. 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 Different time, different place. This was, I think, one of the last shows. I think this is one of the last shows we ever played, too. One of the last shows we ever played. And we, uh, um, like, life had changed a lot after then. Because, like, after that's when I went to college. And things, uh, things, things took a, took a turn. Things took a turn. College was like, I don't have any, like, I don't have any pictures of anything past then. Like, this is the, like, this is, this would be like the, the last picture I would have. Um, this is like the last picture I have before I went to like, before I was getting ready to go to college. Right. So I had the, I had the long goofy hair again. I just got my braces off. So I was hardcore cheesing. I would cheese all the time. Absolutely cheeser, you know, big cheesing constantly. And, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, broccoli cut his back. I went, I went back and forth. Sometimes I would want to get my hair cut. Sometimes I wouldn't want to get my hair cut. Spearbox shirts were at favorite metal band at the moment. There is no better metal band right now, but it's not true. That's not true. There's some, there's also some really good ones. There's a lot of really, there's a lot of really good metal right now. Spearbox is fantastic though. I don't know how, like they, they somehow... <clears throat> they somehow only improve like album to album or song to song. It's wild how good they are. And also how consistent Courtney is. She's so good live. Their whole band is so good live. They're even better now. Now they got, uh, now they got homeboy from Azalea dying. No rollerblading picks. I didn't rollerblade. I was a, uh, I was a skateboard kid. I was a skateboard and bike kid. Those are things that I didn't. I never got rollerblades. 
Actually, funny story about rollerblades. I don't think I actually had a picture of it that was in here. I thought that I had one, but uh, I remember during either sixth or seventh grade, my mom, during like sixth or seventh grade, my mom came in and she was like, uh, hold, on, hold on, track your story back. So do you guys remember back in like, you know, junior high, middle school, if you went to like, uh, like I, I went to like kind of a, like a private school originally um, before I went to like public school for high school, but you would have like the end of the year trip, you know, like, so like, uh, back then we had a end of the year trip to a roller skating rink. So I never been roller skating. I never roller skated in my entire life ever. And I was like in the little practice rink, kind of like just pushing myself back and forth from like wall to wall. And, um, and my mom came up and was like, you need to get out there with the other kids. And I'm like, ah, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I like, I didn't have my balance. I wasn't ready. I, there's no way that I could. She's like, I need to get a picture of you. I need to get a picture of you skating with the other kids. And I'm like, mom, I don't, I don't think, I don't think this is going to work. And she's just like, you need to get out there. And I'm like, oh, so I, I went for it. I was out there for maybe, maybe four or five minutes at most. And the next thing I know, I, um, fell directly on my, directly on my wrist. And it hurt bad. It hurt bad, bad, bad. And I came and I told her and I was like, hey, I'm like, I think there's something wrong with my wrist. And she's like, she's like, huh? No, uh, and she, she thought I was just like messing around. She thought I was just lying or whatever it was. And I'm like, mama, I, I, seriously. And she's just like, okay, what, whatever. She's like here. And she gave me some, some coins or something like that. Told me to go play. Uh, it's like, she was one of the, um, she was one of the uh, uh, people that was like helping to watch. You know what I mean? One of the uh, escorts or whatever for the, for the, for the kids. And, um, Come to find out, yeah, I broke it. I broke my wrist. <laughs> it was broken two places. It was broke in the middle. It was broke on the side, and then the one, and the bone in the middle. Both got broken. So that next day, I had a cast. <laughs> the funny thing is, is that I, like I think it was already, I think it was probably fractured before then because it was still sore. Because I think like the, it was, I think it was the week before that I was with friends on a playground and we were like trying to see how how high we could swing and then jump off of a swing and one of the times that i swung i went super high i got it like all the way up to the bar and then i jumped off to like fly in midair and then i tipped when i fell down and i i landed on my wrist in the gravel and it hurt hurt a lot and i held my wrist for a long time i even wrapped my wrist like in my shirt you know what i mean like had my wrist like in my shirt like this while i was walking around uh just trying to give it some added support because it hurt so much and then the next week it was still sore but we went to the skating rink and then I fell on it again. And then when I fell on it the second time, I think that was uh, all she wrote. And then it broke it in two places. I fell out of a tree. I jumped and slipped. Uh, went down on my face and broke my wrist. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I did that stuff all the time, dude. I, I was like the most accident prone child ever. There's uh, There was another picture in here. There's another story that I completely forgot to tell. But like back from like the Ninja Turtle chair times, like back from like back here this is before i had this is before i had a scar you can't I, this is this is like right around the time that it probably happened but basically what my parents had gone on a uh, on a trip they'd like fucking ran off to I don't know, mexico or something like that my grandparents were the ones that were were watching me and what ended up happening is is they um they i thought they were coming home soon so you know, I obviously like young kid, miss their parents. And I think I heard somebody at the door and I thought it was my parents that were coming home. And I ran and I fell. And you can probably see it. I fell forward and my two front teeth went straight through my bottom lip all the way to the other side. Full chomp all the way through my all the way through my mouth. And, uh, my grandparents had a really hard time, uh, get it. I don't think I even got proper stitches. I think I got bandaged because the hospitals turned them away because they didn't have any proof that they, that I was their grandchild and neither of my parents were around. 
so they wouldn't allow them to be able to like admit me to a hospital to get uh uh to get anything taken care of it was like really weird i think that something like something happened i don't exactly know i don't i don't really remember the story fully but uh yeah yeah, that's like what that's one of the reasons why the scar is so bad so many years later is because it, it never got it never actually got like stitched up the way that it should have sadly enough <laughs> it's like the it's the worst it's the second worst scar i have on my body uh when i was a kid i split my ear in half on a playground and my mom sewed it together herself that's what i'm talking about man that's some old school stuff right there yeah oh the good old days not back then yeah 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 to be honest, that sounds that sounds really illegal. I I don't know. Not back then. It probably wasn't. Uh, I, apparently, it wasn't because you know obviously it didn't get it didn't uh, it didn't heal up the way that it was supposed to. Not with how bad it looks. I mean, still today, it's like a huge, thick white scar. You know what I mean? <clears throat> but um, yeah, yeah. So there's that. And then, so let's see. Uh, I don't really necessarily have a lot of pictures after after the band days because after the band days is when i is when i really started to like work a lot harder and had to work to be able to try to like make a living and stuff like that because at that time i started to uh i dropped out of college i went to college for video game design that was like my main dream it's always been my dream video games have always been my dream since i was a kid i i still have at my mom's house there's a red notebook that's kept with like all of my old things. And it was a notebook that I was supposed to be keeping a journal that you were supposed to keep during a, during a, uh, like summer camp, right? Like uh, summer school is what it was. And in summer school, I'd wrote in my book that I, you know, I wanted to make video games or I wanted to work with video games or something like that. I had, you know, all these, like all this stuff was already written in there. And this is back when I was like seven or eight or nine years old or something like that. And, um, I, I went to college initially, uh, but the problem is, is like, I was going to go away to college and I didn't, I was originally going to go to, uh, uh, to an art, art and video game design school in Florida, uh, because I wanted to get away from home and I wanted to like strike out and do something different. And I think that, you know, a lot of people probably have that feeling at one point or another, another, where they think that they have to get away from home, like home is where they need to be away from. And in that case, for me, I think it actually was what I needed to do. Um, just because like I had a lot of distractions back home and I didn't. So the, like uh, I ended up staying instead. I, I met a girl, of course. And when I met a girl, I was like, oh, I can't leave now. I can't leave now. Especially because like I, like I was an awkward kid in high school. So it was tough for me to like find a lot of girls. And, uh, you know, I went to college. When I went to college, I, you know, it was really tough to be able to try to balance all that kind of all that travel. All the time that you'd have to spend on it, like I had to, I have to had to take a train. I couldn't drive. I had to go into the inner city to be able to do it, and it's really, um, yeah, it's not good, man. Like it's, uh, it's one of those things. Like especially like back home, I'm like I'm, I'm from the Chicago area, right? And driving into like downtown to Chicago, downtown Chicago to go to college was a nightmare. Nightmare. It's the last thing you'd want to have to do. Like all that, uh, just way too much time. So eventually, uh, the problem is like I was also since I didn't uh, since I didn't go to a state school. What ended up happening is is I ended up uh, you know having to pay out of pocket, having to take like college loans and stuff like that. And what ends up happening as a result of doing something like that is you take on a whole lot of debt. And I took on debt like super quick, man, like beyond quick. Um, I found myself in a really tough spot very fast. And as a result, what ended up happening is, um. I just kind of ran out of money. So I just started working instead of going to school. And like, it was nice. It was, it was, uh, you know, like once I, once I started to work, like working felt a lot better to be honest. Um, but I don't know, man. It, it, it was a tough slip because like, I don't know if any of you guys have ever done this before. You can tell me if you have or not. You don't have to tell me either. Um, uh, more towards like East Chicago. Um, you kind of just get comfortable working. When you drop out of school, you just get comfortable working. 
you get comfortable with the grind. You get used to the grind. Even though you're not making as much money as you probably should, even though you're not doing what you know that you want to do or doing something you even want to do in the first place, you kind of find yourself just feeling comfortable with just doing like being okay, being com like uh, um, complacent, I guess is what it is. And like some people are going to look at that and they're going to attribute, attribute it to being like, you know, uh, laziness or something like that. But it's not really like that. It's just that it, some people are content with what they have. Um, but sometimes that contentness only lasts for so long, especially when you're in like certain industries. And like, I used to work in the service industry. I was a salesperson. That was like the one thing that I was like, I was really good at sales. I was really good at talking to people. It was like the one thing that I could, I, I could actually like smash out of the park just about every single time. And one of the things that I thought was really cool was like, you know, how good I was at that job. Little did I realize, like, the longer that I was in that job, the less money I made because that job didn't scale well with an economy. Like, those, like sales jobs just do not scale well with economies, especially because of the fact that, like, you'll go into, like, area, like times in which there's, like, a recession or something like that, and now all of a sudden less people want to buy things, and also your wages aren't going up, and as a result, you're making less money because less people are buying things, and also your, your wages don't meet, like, what's going on with the economy. Um, so I didn't, I didn't realize that I let a lot of years slip by because I stayed in that kind of profession. Um, it took a while. It took a long time. And then finally I, um, I started like, I started going back to school and taking classes part-time for business and, um, and was going to use that as a way to either move up or move out was the idea, right? Uh, you fall into a rhythm. Consistency feels safe especially once you're uh once you're past the college grind well see that's the thing like i wasn't even out of like i was out of the college grind because of like my own self-imposed limitations more than anything else right like i didn't like it's not like i actually overcame that objective i sidestepped it um and i think that probably wouldn't feel as bad if it wasn't for the fact that like i you know just didn't actually pass you know what i mean um and that kind of stuck with me, which made me like, all, like always feel guilty about not finishing school. So like years later, what I ended up doing is, is like I, while I was still working at the time, I like went back to school. And then like, <clears throat> if you guys have ever worked in the service industry and you've ever worked for companies that, you know, do sales, obviously like a lot of the guys that are always up in like higher management for some of these companies are always in the position in which that they think that they're like the gods of sales, right? Like they're just like these mind, like mind masters, of any uh, of uh of uh you know uh, like they think they understand people so well and and etc and <laughs> they're assholes <laughs> i'll just be real they suck and you know me going to me me going to school and stuff like that it ended up just being this whole thing where um you had like people that were like purposely like trying to limit you. So like when I actually had a school school schedule, these guys would quite literally like try to schedule me for work on a school day. And I'm like, dude, you know, I have class. And they're like, okay, well you need to come to work though. And I'm like, I, like I'm paying for school. I can't skip school to come here. We don't have anybody else. That's not my problem. You know what my schedule is like. And then they would just, they would, they would just threaten your job instead. And it's like, well, I, I need that because I need that to live to have a home and a, you know, or have an apartment and, and et cetera and have food and da, da, da. So like I would get, I, I kept getting like screwed like that, which then forced me to drop out again. So there's like my second dropout. And then, uh, which like the funny thing is, is that like you know, a lot of people act like things like that don't happen to people. They a hundred percent do happen to people. Like it was held over my head very, very like blatantly. It was terrible. It was such a bad time. Um, and it, it like it does it do, does terrible things to your self confidence as well. Terrible things to your self confidence because you f you feel powerless. You know what I mean? And you're like, well, how am I ever going to overcome this situation? How am I ever going to overcome you know this kind of challenge when, um, you know when you feel so, you know, powerless in that kind of situation when somebody's literally holding your, uh, you know, your livelihood by a string. And, uh, luckily, uh, I found another way out. Uh, I was complaining about my job and, and things like that with work. And, uh, uh, somebody else overheard the entire conversation, uh, and basically told me they're like, Hey, you know, I, I got some, you know, I, I 
you know, know somebody that works for a construction company. They're always looking for people. They're always hiring. Um, you know, the, it, it's a basically like it was supposed to be a, uh, it's like a health and safety and rescue company is what they were. And what they would specialize in is like um, high risk jobs. And you're there as a, as a rescue team and as a, um, um, as a uh, like consultant. So you're like on site rescue and consultancy. It's a, it's like a, a dual sided, dual sided job. And uh, they were like, you know, go and apply and see if you can get in. So I went and applied. I, immediately basically got in like the second that I applied, which is really nice. And then they were like, well, you need, you need to show up here for a week to see if you can actually pass. They have a one week course that's paid. Um, but whether or not you get the job is at the end, whether or not you can actually pass the test. If you can't pass the test, then you, you can't, uh, uh, you can't get through. Right. So, um, I actually had vacation time. I burned my vacation time to go and take these classes. So I went and took the classes. It was like learning how to tie all these different knots and things like that. Um, you know, learning, uh, uh, there's a bunch of different first aid classes, emergency response classes, uh, some different construction courses that I went to. Like there's a, a whole lot of stuff that was packed in this one week. And then there was a test at the very end. The test at the very end. I wonder if I can find a video that actually can show this properly. So this is kind of like it. So it's a, it's a uh, physical it's a physical ability test is what it is, right? And the idea of it is is that it's this this is the same kind of test that they use with uh, it's the same kind of test that they use for firefighters. They would have us put on an SCBA. So let's see if he's gonna put one on. Well, he's wait he's he's using a weighted vest. So what they would do is they put us in an SCBA, which is a uh, uh, um, it's a air breathing tank, right? And then you actually have to go inside of this, um, obstacle course, which this kind of looks like they have one here. Not really. Okay. So this is just a corridor test. So like, so basically it's, it's similar to this very limited space. You're literally inside of like a space that's probably as big as like the gap that I have on my screen right now. Right. And what I would have to do is, is I actually had to it, what they used is they used a Connex box, like a C can, and they actually compartmentalized everything in the entire thing. And then you had to put on all of this equipment. You had to have like an FR suit on. You had to have the SCBA. You had to have the mask on, the air turned on. And then what you had to do is, is you have to actually go in and there was a dummy, a body, dummy, like a dummy body or whatever that was in there. You had to crawl through this thing in the dark, no light whatsoever. You had to go by feel because you're pretending like it's filled with smoke. You had to go in, you had to find the, find the body, you had to wrap it up, get it inside of this, uh, this, this like, um, a sked, right? A sked is kind of like a, uh, a mobile stretcher. It's like a flexible stretcher. And then you, you put them on it, you tie them up and then you get them out of there. And I'll be honest with you, like, like this, I'm, I mean, this is pretty easy. Like if, th if this is what I had to do, cause this is just a, uh, this is just a piece of duck work is what this is. Like, uh, you know, this is for like air conditioning or something like that. If I had to do something like this, this would be easy. I was inside a damn maze that was completely pitch black. And on top of that, I had to wear a full SCBA and all FRs as well. <laughs> that sucked. That sucked. So like, they're, it looks like they're trying to like use kind of like a sked uh, or something like that with this as well. It's like a, it's a, it's a fully, it's, you know, it's, it's a fully weighted body that you actually have to drag around. Right. And, um, we, the first person that went in to the, went into the uh, went into the maze, they shut the door behind them immediately. Bam, 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 bam. They didn't know that they're claustrophobic. And honestly, in a lot of cases, I feel like some people don't really realize that they're claustrophobic. Like they are, but it also depends on the situation that you're in. If it's a high stress situation and you're in a closed space, you're gonna feel some level of claustrophobia, right? And uh, there was ten of us. The first five went in, all five failed. Next guy goes in, failed. Six. Now we're down to four people. My turn. They send me over there. I put on everything. I go in. 
They shut the door behind me. And I'm not going to lie to you, like, especially because um, I don't know if any of you guys have ever like, like uh, air tank scuba before or anything like that. But like using a uh, like a, a supplied air device. It, it's not it doesn't feel natural because it's not on demand. It's on demand air. So when you breathe in, it goes right rather than it just being like naturally breathing like we normally do. Same thing goes for like breathing out and breathing in just isn't the same. And it's not, and when it's your first time doing it, it's really awkward to get used to. And, um, you know, they shut me in there. It's a high stress situation. I'm wearing all this stuff. I'm super hot. You know what I mean? Uh, and, it, and you're in a, uh, uh, not only is it pitch black, but also at the same time, you know, I'm inside of this like super tight cramped space. That's honestly smaller than what this is, right? It's smaller than what this is. This is this. I actually, I'd probably say the compartments were about this size. But there were there were four of them. There was two. There's two on top, and then two, and then two on the bottom, right? And the minute they shut the door, the panic rolls in. The minute the door shuts, I, like my heart, my heart rate goes, bam, 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 and I'm like, I, I'm like doing my best to like try to just calm down a little bit because I can feel myself start to pass out, like genuinely have a panic attack, and I'm like, no, no. This is going to sound so terrible, but what I, I mean, uh, like it kind of is for the, but like the thing is like the only thing that like helped me like get over the moment was the fact that I had to picture myself going back to my old job because that's what would happen if I didn't pass. And that's what I did. And I just like gritted my teeth and I like flexed my muscles as hard as I could and just try to concentrate the best I could on just like breathing and calming down. And then afterwards I clenched, un unclenched, sorry. And like, slowly relaxed and got it together. I went through the course. I found the body. I wrapped it up. I got it out. I knocked on the door. I pulled it out and I passed. I was the only one out of, out of the first 25 people that came in and then the extra 10 people that they had. I was one of the only ones that passed. I think there was actually like one or two other people actually now that I think about it, but I think they came in later. It wasn't that initial class that they were in. And, uh, yeah, that was crazy. That was wild. That was such, and you know what the funny thing is, is like, it was such a, such an awesome experience, <clears throat> especially for like, remember, remember at the very beginning of this, when we were talking about all these different stories throughout my life and things like that, you know, one of the things that I brought up was like middle school sports and how like nerves and being put in a high pressure situation is something that like you have to put kids and, and people through at one point for them to be able to get over it. Because if you don't, then what ends up happening is, is that for the rest of their life, <clears throat> you know, if they don't face what it feels like to have that, then they're just never going to get over it. They're never going to get past it. And in the case of me, this was the moment where I finally got to get over it. It's still hard to deal with because you're still going to have it, but it's just being able to recognize what it is in the moment recognize those nerves recognize that you know whatever it is and and just kind of get past it it's hard to do it's hard to do great story glad you liked it your brain told you it could be worse yeah exactly exactly grit your teeth and keep pushing forward yeah and that's basically what i did um, it was, it was, a it was a proud moment for me that I, I got to do something that I knew that I could do. Um, and I proved it to myself and that was sick and I'm so happy for that. But, uh, I mean, it was still hard. Let's be real. Like it was still really hard. It was very, very hard. And so after that, after that, I started traveling because it was a construction work. So they would travel, they'd, they'd send us all over the place. And initially, I loved the job. The job was great. Uh, you know, I, I would meet all kinds of new people, a ton of people that are down to earth. Construction workers are a whole other breed of human. Um, you know, you, you'd meet some really cool people, some really crazy people. You'd meet you know, all kinds of people in between. I got to travel. I finally got to leave the state and, and go and look around and see what the rest of the world had to offer. And um, and everything was pretty good. I, I really like it, it was good as long as I stayed in like the Midwest. And it wasn't until, you know, like time had passed and, you know, I was kind of realizing that I was getting like overworked a little bit too much, like genuinely overworked. And then all of a sudden I started realizing that 
you know, after a couple years had passed, I basically had just changed hands from one terrible manager to another terrible manager. And it didn't happen immediately, right? It's like any new job. When you get to a new job, it's all like, oh, you're super stoked. It's fresh. It's new. You're learning something different. You're learning new skills. So you're really kind of distracted by all of those things. And then all of a sudden it, it kind of crashes down at one point in time. I, I remember exactly I remember exactly when I had the, the realization was I had worked. I had worked a 16 hour shift. I drove two hours to get back home. I made a plate of food. I sat in my bed and I was getting ready to go to sleep. I had the next day. I had the next day off. I didn't have anything else. No, no, no. I had the next day. I had to go to work the next day, but I had to go to work. It was a night shift. I get a call or sorry. No, no, no. I take the back. Sorry. I worked 16 hours. I came back home. I, I drank a bunch of energy drinks so that I could stay up because I needed to sleep during the day because I had to start a night shift the day after. So I do that. And then at five o'clock in the morning, I get a phone call from my, from like right when I was getting ready to like fall asleep, five or six o'clock in the morning is when I start, started to go to sleep. I get a phone call from my boss and he says, so-and-so didn't show up for their job. I need you to get out there. And I'm like, I haven't slept. And he's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, I worked 16 hours today. I came home and I stayed up all night so that I could sleep this morning and then go to the night shift. I don't, you don't have to worry about the night shift. I need you to go to this day shift. And I'm like, I haven't slept in 32 hours. And he's like, are you telling me you're turning down the job? I'm like, I, I don't think this is a healthy thing to do. Like, I, I don't think it's safe for me to do that. I don't think it's safe for me or the workers or anybody for me to be, be there without any sleep. And he's like, well, I mean, I mean, you can turn us down, but you know, I don't know when the next time I'm going to call you what the job is. And I'm like, well, I'm going to the night shift tomorrow. And he's like, no, I already took you off of it. Okay, dude. Okay, man. Washed my face, put on my shoes, went out the door, went to, drove two hours back to this place, worked there for 16 hours, got done, got ready to leave. I'm, I'm an hour away from home and my phone rings and he says, the guy for the night shift isn't going to show up. I need you to go to the night shift. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I haven't slept. It's now been, I think at that point it would have been uh, over that. I've been like, uh, you know, it was like 26 hours or would have been. 24 hours, 36 hours, 24 hours, like 72 hours or something like that. Like at this, at this point, like I, I had, I had already worked three 16 hour shifts at one, a night, <clears throat> one, a day shift, an, uh, an, another, a night shift without any, uh, or a day shift without any sleep. And then a night shift right after that, all of them being 16 hours a piece over the course of two days. And I was dead and they expected me to go in to work the next day. And I'm like, dude, and I mean, I still did it. I'm not saying that I didn't. I just pushed through. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I just pushed through it. Um, I didn't complain. I didn't say anything, but it was one of those things where I'm like, there's something wrong here. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, and the thing is, is like, I'd always turn, I just, I turned into it and turned into a yes man. I couldn't help it, dude. Like the money was really good. I was finally on my feet. I was paying off my bills. I was even paying my college debt. Like I was finally in a good place. And I'm like, you know, the last thing I want to do is lose this job or anything like that, or even think to myself that I could get a better one. And if you're from the Midwest, you definitely know what I'm talking about. Like finding good work and a good pay is tough. It's very hard. It's very hard in the Midwest. And, um, uh, yeah. So, I, uh, so I started to, you know, have my doubts about the work at the very least, have my doubts about it. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, I feel like I'm not getting treated right. And then I started seeing everything kind of add up and I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, 
This is like I just left my old situation for the for a new situation, but the new situation's worse and also the same, but pays more. So it's like this kind of sucks. So what I ended up doing is, um, you know, I tried to like move up in the company. I took classes so that I could get a different type type of position, so I wasn't working doing the same kind of work. I could do more like independent contractor work for the company. <clears throat> and then they finally gave me a shot to do so after I got all the certifications on my own, on my own money to do so. I went and I, I went and I did a couple of jobs. Both jobs that I did, I got like like five star reviews. The guys absolutely loved me. They said I did a great job. They were really happy with the work ethic and all that good stuff. And they're like, they're like, hey man, I'm gonna suggest you. We have another job that's coming up on, you know, you know, in a, in a month from now, I want you on it. So I'm gonna call your employer. I'm gonna tell them that I want you on it. I'm like, okay, cool. I go back, <clears throat> I go back. If you guys wanna know how scummy these guys can be, I go back and I'm like, hey, you know, so they're like, okay, we're gonna send you out on one of these like other consultancy jobs. And I'm like, well, I don't wanna go back to doing that. I like what I'm doing right now because it actually had like nice hours. I actually got sleep. It was better pay. I'm like, well, it wasn't better pay. They were still paying me the same price. And he's like, yeah, you know, we were thinking about using you for that, but you know, we got, you know, the people called about your, your, uh, you know, about your, uh, their experience with you and sorry, man. Yeah. They just didn't like you. What do you mean? What do you mean they didn't like me? Yeah. Yeah. They said you didn't do a very good job. Uh, you know, that, well, you'll, you just need some more experience is all. That's probably what it is. You just need some more experience. I go up and I call these dudes and I'm like, I'm like, Hey dude, I'm like, my boss just told me that you guys said that you had a problem with, you know, with me, with, with the work that I did. And he's like, no, I told him you did a great job. I said, I wanted, I said that I wanted you out here next month. And I'm like, that's not what he told me. He told me that you said I was terrible, that I need a whole lot of work, that I'm too young, that I you know, don't have enough education and all this other stuff. And he's like, no, no, I didn't say that. And he's like, and then he ends up telling me something. He dropped this guy, this guy that I worked for dropped a bomb on me. He goes, I used to work for that company. I'm like, okay. And he's like, they did the same thing to me. He's like, they will withhold money from you. He's like, they'll do this, they'll do that. And I'm like, oh no, this is not what I need to hear right now. <sighs> and I'm like, I was hoping that that wouldn't be the case. So after working for these guys doing a higher level of work, I finally was like, hey, so, you know, you guys told me that this is like a trial and that I would get a pay raise because it's a higher paying job you know, can I get that raise? This, these dudes looked at me straight in the face and said, do you think you deserve it? Doesn't matter if I deserve it. I'm doing the job. That's like, like it was the weirdest thing I've ever heard somebody say to me. It's almost like if you like interim became a, became a manager of a store, right? Like, let's say you were a cashier. Something happens to the manager. They have no other choice but to use you in the interim. And then they say, you know what? We're going to, we're going to keep you as manager. And you're like, awesome. You're like, can I get my pay raise? And they're like, do you think you deserve it? <laughs> I'm like, my mind was blown. I'm like looking at this guy and I'm like, I was so confused on how to respond. And I just like looked at him and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think. I think that I'm, uh, I think that I, yeah, <laughs> I think I deserve it. <laughs> He's just like, I don't know. I don't know. And they, they, so they, they try to lowball me and they were like, okay, well, we'll give you, we'll give you half of the raise. Now we'll give you half of the raise, you know, after this next job. And I'm like, so they gave me that half a raise and then they sent me out to work in California. By half a raise, by the way, I can tell you guys how much it was. This is an old job that I worked. I was getting paid 19 an hour. They gave me a raise up to 21 an hour. And then they sent me to work in California. Not just any California. Los Angeles, California. Private business, no HR. Private business, no HR. So they sent me out to work in Los Angeles, California for $21 an hour. And 
I, and and the thing is is it like i didn't think that like the pay scaling was like that crazy right i didn't think it was that crazy i didn't think it was like uh, <laughs> i didn't know anything about california you know what i mean so i get out here i start working you know i'm doing i'm doing i'm doing this like contracted gig for them and then i come to find out that i am the lowest paid person on the job and the people that i am managing like the people that I'm telling what to do, the people that I am saying, hey, you need to do this and you need to do that and things like that. Those guys are getting paid four times my amount. Four times. Like like 60 and 70 dollars an hour, like 60 to 80 dollars an hour. And I'm like, the guys that I'm working with that I'm also managing, by the way. Like, so they sent us out in a team. There's a team of 10 of us, right? They're, each team had a team leader that was the one that was like doing everybody's timesheets, that was doing all this other side work and stuff like that. I've come to find out those guys are getting paid two to three times as much as I am. Yet I'm responsible for them. They did something wrong. I got in trouble for it, even if it didn't have anything to do with me. And then finally, I was just like, bro, I need to find, I need to find a new job. And luckily, the, the, the company that I was working with at the time, the construction company that I was working with at the time that was there, we were a contractor, so I got contracted to a contractor, sub subcontractor work. Luckily, that contractor that was there saw value in me. And they were like, hey, man, uh, you know, we saw, they, they knew how much I was getting paid. And they were like, you know, if you're, looking for, if you're looking for a company to work with, we will give you a job. Are you okay with traveling? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine with traveling. Obviously, I'm here. Okay, all right. They hired me. And the funny thing is the, the company that I was working for tried to sue initially or threatened to. They, they threatened to sue. Okay. Uh, because they have, a, uh, they have a clause. It's called a uh, no headhunting. So basically subcontractors or contractors can't take employees from the subcontractor. That's how that whole thing works, right? And they're like, well, okay, you can have the employee, but you know, you're going to need to pay us like $25,000 or whatever their fee is if you steal one of their employees these dudes are like nah we're not gonna pay that <laughs> they're like if you want to take us to court you can but that just means you're not gonna get any more business from us they back down like pretty much completely like they, they back down like immediately they're like oh okay yeah never mind <laughs> greed so greedy private construction companies love experienced underpaid workers uh, did they tell you not to discuss your income with coworkers? Oh, of course they did. Of course they did. That's one of the most scummiest things I've ever heard of. That's not the first time that's happened to me, by the way, though. Like, and a lot, this happens to a lot of people. I feel like nobody ever discusses these kind of things. Like, the idea that management will try to make it where like you're not allowed to be able to tell other workers what you're getting paid like you know why they you know why they don't want you to do that it's because they don't want other people to find out they're getting paid less than other people that they're probably more qualified than happened to be at my old job yeah you know what i'll give you guys a really good example i ladies and gentlemen ladies and gentlemen i was a victim of sexism. I was a victim. I was I was brutalized, victimized. Brutalized and victimized. I'll tell you how it happened. Back in the day day. Back in the day day, I worked at a little place called Hollywood Video. Okay? And I was the movie god, all right? I was the movie video game god. If, I, if you wanted to see it, I got something to watch. I got something for you to watch. Don't even worry about it. I was the king of suggestions. I was all over the place. I was the nicest guy that was there. I was one of the top sellers that they had for the company because back then they had this, uh, I don't know if you guys remember this, but they had like, uh, um, uh, what was it? They do you guys remember like the, the the companies used to have like membership programs? So if you signed up for it, you get like X amount of like free movies to be able to uh uh free movies to be able to like rent a, a week or whatever. You could have like two two out at a time or something like that, right? You could have two out at a time. 
And uh, I was the top in rental in uh, in getting people to like sign up for the rental program. I was the absolute king. And uh, I even had trophies and stuff like that that I had earned from the company. I was like three times in a row winner, one of the best employees that they had there. And I remember that I was like, there was this one manager that we had that was so awesome. She was so cool. She was just the night. She was the nicest, sweetest lady I'd ever worked for in my entire life. Um, I mean, she was younger. I say sweetest lady. Like she was like maybe like probably like six or seven years older than I was or something like that. She's probably like 10 years older than me at the time when I was working for her. But she was, uh, she was so nice. So nice. Such like really cool, really supportive. Uh, you know, uh, you congratulate you on your hard work. She'd help you out when you're, you know, when you're feeling low, like just the perfect kind of manager, the best manager I've probably still had to this day, period. And, um, she got promoted. She got promoted to an area manager for the company, moved down to Indianapolis and was going to be an area manager out there and like help to run the company in the future. And, uh, instead of giving us, and so then all of a sudden her job came up and so did the assistant manager job because we figured that our assistant manager would get promoted and then, and then there, the assistant manager job would become available. We didn't think that they would look from outside to find somebody else instead, but that took, that took a while for them to even happen in the, or that took a while to even happen in the first place. So, so when our manager left, they brought in the district manager, right? And... I, I didn't really know her that much. Like we had talked a couple of times, but she always kind of like blew me off anytime we met, which is, I always thought it was like really weird because like, like it'd be like my manager there. She's like, oh, this guy, this is our, our best employee right now. You know, she shows like our sales numbers and stuff. And she's like, he's like carrying the store right now. And our store was like a multi-million dollar store at the point, at this point, because this is before like Netflix, Redbox, all that, Redbox and all that stuff. So, but she like never said anything. She just, <sighs> I have stuff in my car. I need you to carry it. I'm like, okay, fine. Oh uh, yeah, sure. You know, like it was just really weird. I was like, I, 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 I really didn't, really didn't get it. And um, so after our manager leaves, that district manager comes in and she takes over the store to run it for the interim until she picks a replacement, which we thought it would just be our one of our assistant managers. You have two at a time. Both of them were great. Both of them did a really good job. Both of them had been there for a really long time. But for some odd reason, neither one, neither one, neither one were apparently a good enough choice. And um, uh, like this whole thing kind of goes on for a while. Uh, you know, she she's still there. She's kind of still running the still running the thing. Um, she ends up being there for like a year, and there's just like no change, no new assistant managers, no new manager, no not, nothing. I'm like, man, this is so weird. Um, and then I am. One day I was talking to, uh, you know, talking to this other girl and we were talking about just like how much, uh, like, um, I didn't say how much I got paid or anything like that, but, um, cause I was a, like the step under an assistant. I was a shift manager. Like I was like the, the shift leader, shift manager, whatever it was. And then you had workers underneath that. Right. And that position pays more, obviously. That's the reason why you take it, like being a shift manager or whatever. So I'm talking to one of the clerks, one of the clerks that, that was there. And we're just kind of BSing back and forth. And I'm like, hell yeah, I got my money. I'm like, and I, I said how much it was out loud. And she was like, that doesn't make sense. And I'm like, what do you mean it doesn't make sense? And she comes up to me and she goes, she's like, no, you, how much you got paid? She's like, you worked more hours last week than I did. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, yeah, I got paid way more than you. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you What do you mean you got paid more than me? I'm your manager. How does the manager get paid less than you if I worked more hours than you? That doesn't even make sense. I'm like I'm like what what? She's like, "Yeah." And I'm like She's like, "How much do you get paid an hour?" And I'm like and this is obviously this is back in the day, right? So like wages are completely different back then. I think I was getting paid like six thirty-five an hour. I was gonna pay, yeah, I was gonna pay like six thirty-five an hour. I was like, yeah, like six thirty-five. She's like, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting eight fifty.
850. I don't know, it was back in the day. A million years ago. I mean, it's also the Midwest, so like... What is what is the... Uh, I mean, minimum wage in... in what, like, uh, this is Indiana, so... It's not that far off. It's like a 725 now. She was getting paid more than me. And I was like, like, and a lot more than me. I'm her manager and she's making more than I am. And I'm like, this, I don't under, like, I don't understand what's going on here. And I was like so confused and I didn't even know how to even like approach this. So then finally, like the, the district manager came back in and I was like, hey, I need to talk to you for a minute. And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, so I was, you know, we we're just having a casual conversation. And um, I, like, I don't know if for something like something ever happened where for some odd reason I didn't get my raises or whatever. I'm like, but, um, you know, I, I was discussing back and forth with Sam and you know, she's, she's getting paid more than me. And she's like, you're not supposed to be discussing your wages. And I'm like, oh, I, I get that. But I'm like, it, it happened. And I'm like, so I'm I'm curious now. I'm like, I'm her manager. She's making more money than me. And she's like, yeah, she is. And just stared me down. And I was like, I, I'm like, I, I, I like, I, I didn't even know how to react. Like, I, like, how do you how do you react in that situation? I'm like, like, like she was shoving it in my face. And I'm like, so, um. What am I, what am I supposed to like, okay, I can you, I'm like, do I need to do something? Did I do something wrong? What is it? And she's just like, no, you don't need to worry about it. And I'm like, yeah, I do. I'm like, I, I'm her manager and you're paying her more than me. That doesn't make any sense. And she's like, yeah, it does. I'm like, no, no, it doesn't make any sense. And she's like, do you think you deserve it? And I'm like, why, why would I? And she's like, you know. Like, no, I don't know. I, like, I, like, and the funny thing is, like, people are saying, like, I'd be so mad. I'd be so mad. No, I wasn't mad. I was genuinely just, like, shocked. I didn't know. Like, I have no idea why. I'm like, I, I, like, that's the problem is that I was looking internally and I'm like, I don't understand why I haven't done anything wrong. I'm like the best. I'm, I'm literally on the top of your sales chart. I've been working. You know, I've been dedicated to the job and working my ass off. I love this job. I love working here. I love the people that I work with. I love the customers. I I'm like, I, I don't understand. Like, I've never been late to work. I've never done anything wrong. I, I, like, I, I, like, I'm dumbstruck. Yes, exactly. Like, I'm sitting there and I'm just like so confused. And she's just like, we're done here. And she's like, you bring this up again and you're fired. And I'm like. I, I didn't know how to react. So I ended up. Uh, like I talked to one of the other assistant managers and I told him what happened. Right. And I was like, I, I, I pulled him, I pulled him across. I'm like, Chris, I'm like, dude, uh, so, you know, so-and-so is getting paid more than me and this and this and this. And he's like, yeah, he's like, yeah. And, and I'm like, and he's like, I'm like, you know, and he's like, yeah, he's like, I am too. And I'm like, what do you mean? You know, what do you mean you are too? And he's like, you've never noticed. And I'm like, what? He's like, we're the only two men that work in the entire district. And I was like, super power trip, super power trip. Because right after that, the person that she gave store manager to was her girlfriend. The person she gave the, the store manager role to was her girlfriend. And that, that lady treated me terrible. She was so mean to me. And I, after that, I started to hate my job very quickly. It didn't take long. It didn't take long for me to just like not care at all. After that, I started sneaking people in after hours, watching movies on the, on the big screen monitors with all the different TVs and stuff connected. Uh, I would, uh, I do all kinds of different stuff. I do all kinds of bad stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't hurt the innocent man. 
I was, it was just really weird because it was just like I didn't do anything wrong. So like, I, like, I, like now I feel, I feel for people when they're, when they're, you know, when they suffer from stuff like that. Whether, whether that's both sides, by the way, it doesn't matter who it is. Either way, it's just like really weird that people would pick a side like that. And then also like, like, what do you think, what are you trying to accomplish by like going after somebody that's like super dedicated to their job and loves their job and loves the people that they work with and like obviously, you know, wants to be there. But like, that's the person that you're going to go after to try to exact like whatever kind of avenge or like revenge or make change or whatever it might be because of what you were born into. It's just so weird, dude. So weird. I was so, uh, so awkward. Somebody wants to control something else. Power rush. Probably your fault, man. Probably very true. Probably very true. I agree with you. I'll hardly agree with you. Not in today's age. Yeah, you could see the you could see a guy saying obviously not gonna uh Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a, it's just a really awkward position for to put anybody in, man. It makes me feel like makes me like I mean, it, a part of me is like happy that I experienced something like that because it's an experience that, you know, you, makes you grow in life and makes you understand things a little bit better. It helps to uh mature a bit, but nobody should have to go through that. It's for real. Nobody should have to go through that. No reason. No reason at all. No reason at all, my friends. Oh, there's somebody else who was a first time chatter and I missed it. I'm so sorry. I was just like in the middle, you know, when you're in the middle of a story, you just got to go through it. You know what I mean? It's got to get through it. If you're going to go all bad boy, you might as well go all in, right? Oh, I went all in. I went all in. You're being, uh, yeah, being a big dude myself, I always got typecast into specific roles. Yeah, I mean, that stuff happens as well. That happens on both sides of that spectrum as well. I think a lot of people, like, even though, like, a lot of folks will, like, fat shame and stuff like that, you get skinny shame just as, just this same. I mean, I, I, I was, like, what, almost six foot and weighed, like, 113 pounds. Do you have any idea how many times people called me all kinds of different names and stuff like that? People are mean. Everybody's mean. We're all mean. Even I'm mean. I'm mean, too. I don't give a shit. I feel bad for the male nurses that I work with. They always get roped into helping out with the bigger patients. Yeah, of course, because they're looking for like strong man, right? That's like the whole thing. It's soul crushing. Yeah, can be. Humans suck. Yeah, we can. For sure we can. Hey, straw boy. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. I'm straw boy. Straw boy. All right, I'm going to go back to just doing my normal thing now because I don't know what's going on with this whole like OTK top streamer thing. I probably I probably got kicked out most likely if I did take a wild guess. Zoomer audience and all that kind of shit. You know what I mean? I just don't, I don't really see it. Uh, I don't really see them being uh, really into really into me. I kind of realized that from the beginning to, in the first place. I didn't really know what to do. Like there's other people that are just like playing games and stuff like that. I wasn't really going to do that either. second to go anyway uh you were second yeah i don't know what that uh yeah i don't know enjoying the stream keep doing you yeah 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 yeah, yeah i just jumped around to see interesting yeah yeah this is really interesting though i'm glad you guys enjoyed it it's the it's the only idea that i could come i, I could come up with it would actually kind of stay true well i mean i so I, I need to actually finish the life story right 
So we've gone through like my younger years. We went into the construction part. I started to, uh, one guy shaved his head. Yeah, no, I'm never going to do anything like that. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to cause myself any like pain, discomfort or anything like that for the attention of other people. I'm not going to be anybody other than myself. So. Yeah, simple as that. Um, with that said, uh, so they sent me traveling for work. Luckily, the company that I was working, I worked, ended up working for saw value in me instead. They gave me a job and then, well, COVID and stuff like that changed over the last few years. I've traveled across the country. I've lived in uh, Iowa for a while. I, I worked in Iowa. I lived in Ohio for a while. Um, for like three years, I lived in Ohio, traveling around there and working. Um, I worked in Kentucky for a little while and lived there. Southern Indiana before coming all the way out to California right after the uh uh as an older millennial this is my place yeah yeah I, I, if I anything I'll, I'll attract like the Aspen gold viewer more than I will anything else um so I I traveled around the country worked a bunch of different jobs COVID hit I got sent home I was furloughed for a really long time it was the best days of my life I was getting paid tons of money to sit at home and play Call of Duty it was perfect. You could never ask for anything else. Uh, after that had happened, um, I mean, like, that's like the weird thing when it comes to like COVID is it just kind of just be, it's just like a blank spot where like nothing actually happened for that entire time. You know what I mean? Like nothing happened there. Nothing at all. And um, I went and I just, I moved. I, I, I like, I, I stayed, I went back home. I lived back home for a while. And then they sent me out finally on another job out to California. But by then, um, management at the company had changed. And I was working for people that I'd never worked for before. And they had something against me from the minute that I got here. So basically there was something that happened on our last biggest project that we had. And as a result, they had to, they had to lay off, they had to lay off a whole lot of people and uh get rid of a whole lot of people and ban people from certain facilities and stuff like that and uh in those kind of situations when that much money's on the line millions of dollars etc well scapegoats are the best thing you can possibly have at your side and i turned into one very quickly so uh i lost my job back in uh back in december after traveling doing construction for eight years and uh, now i'm in the position in which i can always go back to do construction if i want to um, but I would try, I want to try to do this. I want to see if I can make it. I want to see if I can pull it together. It was a nice vacation though. I never had one. Yeah, that's also that. Twitch forces you to watch ads. Yeah. Cool to see you found this after all the D-bag employers. Yeah, and the funny thing is, is that like, it... You know what it is? It's just like, it's one of those things where like you work for all these companies and it's like, I think that there are some great companies that are out there. And I think more times than not, you are going to find some situations in which you are going to, uh, you are going to, um, you know, you're going to meet good people and bad people. You're going to find good jobs and bad jobs, but more than anything, it's trying to find something that feels the easiest for you to do. I think that's the best thing to say. Like, even like even hard work, if hard work feels easy, like it's probably because you enjoy doing it in some way. I hope you will. Your YouTube videos are some of the best content I've been watching lately. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. 90s kid. Uh, so what did you do when you found yourself without a job all of a sudden? Uh, did you have savings saved up? Yeah, actually. So this is a, I, I mean, I can give some, real, this is actually some really keen advice I can give to people. So one of the things that I've done over the years is that like, um, like I made good money, right? I made good money traveling and doing construction. You'll always make good money doing traveling and construction. So it's definitely worth it. However, at the exact same time, the other thing to try to keep in mind is as well, is that like, you need to try to do your best to like save money. And like, I, I put like some into investments and some into like, um, like, you know, retirement and stuff like that. But one of the things that I always try to make sure to do is try to make sure that I always put money into my savings because I'm like, I just don't, I'm not very spendy. Are you into anime? I love anime. I watch more anime than I watch anything that's live action. So I, 
I what I always did is like anytime my money came in, I would just throw all of it into savings and then pay my bills and then and then just leave it there and just kind of forget about it. And to be honest, like most of it, I probably should have tried to like put into like, you know, CDs or or like investments or something like that. But I don't really trust any of that shit. What I do trust is the number that I see. And I always wanted to make sure that I had a uh, like a good cushion and I have that. But it it's not like I'm going to try to use the whole thing. Like I saved that money over the course of eight years. If I used all that money, it'd be really stupid because then I wouldn't have anything to be. I wouldn't have a uh, an oh shit you know, break in case of emergency about, you know what I mean? And investments is rich man gambling. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not a rich man. So, um, I don't have a lot of money. I don't, but I have enough to be able to get me by for a little while and try to see if I can make this work. I'm looking at that money as an investment into a new business and seeing if I can make that new business work. I'm looking at, I'm looking at that money as a way for me to invest in starting my own business, which is what I'm doing right now, which is what you're seeing. Stack of cash under the mattress guy, huh? Yeah, basically something like that. You have long-term investing? I, yeah, I have like a 401k that I've invested in for like... Almost 10 years or something, maybe. Sorry, gold dig diggers. Give them time. Yeah, it's going to take a while before I'm like... Before I can be like loaded. That's the other thing, too, is I think... Uh, I think a lot of people will... Um, they will... More times than not they will overestimate how much money you actually make from like content creation, right? So like I have a, like I have a YouTube channel and my YouTube channel is growing relatively well, but it also has like, it also has like dips, like hardcore dips. And sometimes you have like no idea that that kind of stuff is coming. Sometimes videos are going to do well. And sometimes videos are just going to fucking suck. Like I, and you know what the worst part is, is like seeing that like people actually want to like comment and tell you like you don't actually notice it yourself. Like, what is wrong with people? What is wrong with people, man? Like, the internet is just so absolutely, like, it's so toxic, man. Where it's just like, wow, dude, video has 3K views. You fell off. And it's just like, I, I just started. I don't even know what you're, like, why would you say things like that? Like, sometimes videos work and sometimes videos don't. don't. A lot of it always depends on, like, the size of your, a lot of it depends on the size of your, the size of your audience, how big your audience is. And like some people have the ability to make anything interesting. Some people have the audience available for them to be, that, that'll just watch whatever they make. I don't have that. I'll be honest with you. Right now, my audience only wants to see Helldivers 2. And if I make anything else, they won't watch it. That sucks. Because when Helldivers 2 is gone, that means I'm gone. That's how that works. That's the problem. Like, and you can't make people interested in things that they're not interested in. You know what I mean? You can't make people interested in seeing things that they're not interested in seeing. Some people are going to like things for everything, but most people are just going to, but especially when it comes to like YouTube content specifically, like YouTube, most of those people are there for a very specific reason. They came in for a specific game and then they've stuck to that game ever since then. Some people are going to be flexible. Like I see Burrick says down there, nope, Baldur's Gate 3, then Dragon's Dogma 2, and now and, and Divinity and Divinity 2 are also good. Yeah, so like so, sometimes you're going to have people that are that are bouncing around, but they're they're um Yeah, but then you can't you can't <laughs> like I I'm not saying that you can't depend on well, no, I am saying that you can't depend on something that's only going to be here for a couple of for a few months, you know what I mean? Like you never want to staple yourself to a game. You never want to staple yourself to a bit to, to a game. One of the things that I want to do is uh, one of the things that I have to I have to do is I have to stay varied in content. I can't just staple myself to one thing. Make sure channel around democracy. The divers will have no choice. Yeah, that's that's not that's not going to work. Uh, I came here for Baldur's Gate three and then just got comfortable. Yeah, and you're also going to have a lot of people that are like that, too. The algorithm doesn't uh, doesn't favor diverse content. No, it does not. It absolutely does not. Ew. Ew. No. If I wanted to farm right now, I would just go make Helldivers videos, and that's all I would ever make. But I make videos because I like making videos. So I have to do both. I have to like do things that I know will be able to get views and make money, and then I have to do things that I want to do because I want to do it, and I think that it's good content for the people that are here to 
watch me specifically, if that makes any sense. Variety of uh, variety gaming is healthy if gaming is your passion. Yeah, I think that's part of it too. Like you always want to make sure that like you're trying to stay like somewhat varied. Also in like your opinion, because like the problem is, is like if you get too invested in one game, what ends up happening is is that you you kind of lose sight and lose perspective. I think that's the best way to say it. You lose perspective. Uh, listen, you're the main weapon. The game is the backup weapon. Yeah, yeah, true, true. I'm gonna use the I'm gonna use the restroom real quick, and then we're gonna move on. We'll do some news or something like that. Fallout Show is good. Yeah, Fallout Show is actually really good. I was really impressed by it. I'm not done with it yet. I'm still trying. I'm still trying to chunk through it. Like I'm mostly. Th so initially, I was gonna like hold off. I wasn't going to watch like the whole thing for Fallout. But the problem is, there's so many. <sighs> there's so many spoilers on the internet that I can't avoid it, and I need to. And especially like with the spaces that I'm usually in, like I I need to just watch it and get it out of the way and be done with it. Otherwise, like I'm screwed. Otherwise, I'm screwed. Happy time zone, everyone. Have an, uh, have an awesome remaining stream. Thanks, man. <clears throat> Just went through it in two days. Good Lord. You need to do what you need to do. Yeah. The Fallout TV show? It's good. The Fallout TV show is fire. It's so good. They did such a good job with it. I'm really impressed. Amazon's actually overall, I think, done a really good job when it comes to like the like a lot of adaptations. Plot through it in a few days. I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I could do that. Okay. Um. Let's see here. There was some stuff that I was going to look at, and I got to figure it out. I got to find it. I got to see what I can find. Ooh. Well, well, well. Larian Studios, creators of Baldur's Gate 3, will now work on two new original IPs for its next project. Two new original IPs. Does that mean that one is Divinity and the other one is something else entirely? Like, so this is one of the things that like... Okay, so this is one of the things that's really impressive when it comes to Larian Studios. It's one of the probably the best things about them entirely is the fact that like... What they did is they chose to they chose to hold on to the people that they have, right? If you guys remember, I don't know if you guys probably even see the scenes or anything like that, but Sven Vinka of Larian Studios went up on stage and he was like, hey, you know, I'm really sick of these companies that are making the exact same mistakes over and over and over again, and they keep getting rid of, they keep laying off, they keep firing or whatever. 
these people that are supposed to be there that are part of their like long-term existing knowledge that are going to help them continue to make great games in the future and it's one of the biggest problems the video game industry faces today is the fact that they just constantly do this whole thing this whole you know same uh, uh carousel ride where they kick people off and then they bring people back and then they hire new people and they, they they don't keep the people that are there that help them get to where they are today and the problem is with that is that the the more you do that the longer and the older your company becomes the longer in the tooth it becomes what ends up happening is, is that you have so many people that just don't um Uh, you just have people that just don't, uh, they just don't like, I don't know how to say it, but like, you just don't have the people that are there to people to keep you on track, to keep making the same products that you've always been making. So what ends up happening? Yeah. Keeping the talent is really, really important. You know what I mean? So like what ends up happening is like the people that got you to where you are, are no longer there. And how are you supposed to go anywhere else without them? They're the people that created the things that you love the most to begin with. Like, I think uh, if we look at a company like Blizzard, they're probably the, the biggest uh, the biggest ones when it, when you kind of think of something like this, because you look at, say, something like Diablo. Well, like none of the people that were there that came up with Diablo 1 and 2 are even at the company anymore. So the... Um... Oh, God. Hold on. All right, back to it. So one of the things is, is that like when you don't have the people that you need anymore to be able to do the work that you need, like to be able to bring your IPs back to what they used to be, then chances are you're not going to be able to, you're just not going to be able to capture audiences the same. The product's going to change. It's just not going to feel the same. And what Larian did is that like they ramped up big time in their numbers. They hired a ton of people when it came to Baldur's Gate 3. They hired a lot of folks. And one of the things that they want to do is they wanted to make sure that they just held on to those people by whatever means they possibly could and because they invested their money the right way and they didn't overspend or anything like that now they get to hold on to those people and use them to make two new games and also on top of that keep in mind larry and said that they want to make sure that they're releasing games within four years so they don't want to take a long time break between game releases so like we're we're like rightfully probably going to be seeing so sorry we're probably going to be seeing something from larry and studios within the next like few days not a few days like a couple years like within the next two years we'll probably see something from larian and there's also a really good chance that they might do early access again because it's worked out so well for them in the past you know what i mean uh it's probably original ip it's probably original ip well it says new original ip so yeah, they're probably completely different IPs or or it's uh if it says original, that means it's their own, most likely. It's IPs that they own rather than like somebody else's IP. I think us millennials had it good in terms of gaming. We grew up at the right time. Uh and our criticisms, I think, uh have more weight. I mean, yeah, you could probably use like a little bit of ageism on this and it'll probably still work. Yeah, there is some bias in that. No, I still think it probably could be Divinity Original Sin. I could see that. But I do think that they're probably going to make something like science fiction. Is like that's something that the company's never really explored before. And I could see that. Bro, what is that still shot? Patch seven for Baldur's Gate three. Is a, what is this like? Epi, a, like another epilogue for uh, Dark uh, um, Dark Urge? Patch seven will make me finally update the game. What is what is what is in Patch seven? New ending cutscenes for Evil Runs. Ooh.
Uh, Original Sin was uh, far from the rest of the Divinity series. The IP, uh, the IP Divinity is quite large. Yeah, that's the other thing too. Um, uh, that's I think that's something a lot of people fail to realize, or maybe some people just don't know, is that like there, there's a like major time skips in the Divinity franchise, huge time skips. Introducing mod support. Mod support's already happening. I thought that was going to take a little bit longer than that. Evil runs for dirge and tabs. They don't say much more and introducing mod support. Mod support's huge, especially depending on how like how much they open that up. I really hope they open it up big time. If they open it up big time, the game's replay value just goes through the roof. In your opinion, what's the best way to deal with treason? Oh my God. I feel like people just don't want to be playing a looter shooter. Which game is this? I'm being honest. Into the Light has reminded me of why I haven't grinded for a non-crafted gun in the last two years. Outside of nostalgia, why should I spend countless hours grinding for guns that have equivalents in the game or will be power corrupt by themselves in six months? Why grind at all? It's not a fun game loop to have to slog through hours upon hours of repetitive activities just to have a good tool actually to play stuff with um so i'll be honest like paul paul's paul's a big time destiny fan and he will lay down on this he will he will die on a hill for destiny 2 100 percent, this dude will die on a hill for destiny 2 I, and like I, it's not that people don't want to play a looter shooter. The problem is, is it like when you don't make the content around how you get loot interesting? That's what the issue is. It has nothing to do with anything else. It has everything to do with whether or not you are doing something that you actually are going to get, you know, gun slash get. Yeah, 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 of course. Like, I, I like... <sighs> I think Borderlands 2 is a really good example of this because like the activities that you would do in Borderlands 2 to be able to get weapons and equipment were always like really diverse and different. Like it's always at the end of the day, you're shooting something to kill something to get a loot, right? That's that's just how these kind of games go, right? But uh, but in this case, like the thing is, it's like, it's not people, uh, it's not about being a looter shooter. It's like whether or not those activities are actually fun enough for you to, or enjoyable enough for you to want to continue to do, to try to keep rolling that RNG. You know what I mean? Like I, I the funny thing is, is that like, you know, today, like I had put out a video about uh, Bellatro. Uh, the thing is like with that game, like it's all RNG based. It's all grind. It's all just trying to see if you can actually get the, you know, get the cards to make the really powerful deck to do the things that you want to do. Um, you know, Warframe's the same kind of way. But it always it always comes down to like whether or not those activities are fun or interesting, and then also like whether or not the equipment that you get from it or the like items that you get are actually rewarding enough to you know warrant you wanting to get them. It, it's it's a two sided thing. It has to be like really fun gameplay and interesting loop for you to be able to get the things that you want, but also at the exact same time like the loot itself needs to be interesting. Otherwise, like what was the point of me earning this in the first place? And I think that's what like some of these games have kind of gotten away from, especially when it comes to like weapons and stuff like that. Though I do feel like for the most part, like people that are like complaining about stuff like this, it's like most like Destiny is kind of like an easy dog to kick on the ground, if that makes any sense. Like it, it, they, they, everybody, everybody kicks Destiny while it's down. It's easy. It's just like um, Diablo. Diablo 4 is another one. It's very easy to kick while it's down. So even if you want to say something like, oh, I think the game is good or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I think it's getting better. It's going to improve or this is going to be cool. Like you'll immediately get shot down by it just because people are just so used to calling it garbage to begin with. Would Helldivers work as a looter shooter? No, I don't think it would. I guess kind of like an extraction shooter, maybe like, especially with like how like difficulty scales and stuff like that. I guess so. I guess you kind it kind of would, it could. Not saying not saying it, it. I think I think the game how it works already right now is good enough. I don't think it needs to do anything else. Did you find guns on the map? Yeah. What 
is this? You only get to play three of these games? Oh, oh, it's like... I like how most of these are like made up. There's no, we don't know anything about a Red Dead Redemption 3. I mean, you only get to play three of these games? I don't really, like, uh, there's not even like three games out of here that I would pick. Last of Us Part 3. Copium Karma, Karma Farm. It absolutely is. You know, I, you know what I should do? I should check the... Um, I should check the Discord. So, I don't know if you guys know this, but in the Discord, we actually have a, uh, a section that's in there that's specifically there just to be able to... Um, We have a section that's in there specifically just to be able to like send um send stuff my ways or my ways send me articles that you guys uh think i might be interested in seeing so if you aren't in the discord make sure you guys are in the discord so that you can send me things and then i can check them out on stream and see if it's interesting or not okay so let's take a look uh articles ian should see Oh, I saw this. I need to actually watch the video. Um, I actually need to watch the video on... Um... It's back here. I need to watch the video on... Uh... Oh, it's not going to work. Um... Warframe from... I never saw uh, Skill Up ever talk about Warframe. I'll need to check that out. Yeah, I need to do that, man. I keep forgetting to do that. I need to set up the I need to set up the uh the stickies or whatever they're called, the exclamation point commands that you guys can do in chat. Um I didn't see this. All right. Stellar Blade X Near Automata Yokotaro and Hyung Tae Kim uh on how their blockbusters inspired one another. Uh, Stellar Blade creative director uh, uh, Kim has previously stated that Square Enix's Near Automata helped him rediscover the kind of game he wants to make. Set in a post-apocalyptic world, an anime as sword fighting, sword wielding female protagon protagonist, Stellar Blade, uh, inspiration sources didn't go unnoticed when the first trailer released as Project Eve back in 2021. Now, almost two years later, the PlayStation 5 exclusive is ready to release on April 26th. That's actually really soon. Um, as, stated, as stated in our preview, while the aesthetics are indeed, uh, indeed show the similarities between Nier Automata, we thought that Stellar Blade's challenging combat also draws uh, from uh, Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. Uh, Stellar, Stellar, uh, Stellar Blade feels like a high-quality product that has acquired uniqueness through its many inspirations. Uh, IGN Japan sat down with Stellar Blade's development studio, Shift Up in Seoul, South Korea, with Kim and Nier, uh, with Kim and Nier Automata director Yoko Taro, who flew, o who flew over from Japan to discuss the game. Kim and Yoko talked about the similarities as developers and their mutual respect they felt through conversation. They discussed a wider array of matters ranging from the current state of Asian video games to why they wanted to make video games in the first place. Where their comments were often frank, while their comments were often frank, they spoke with a uh, jocularity and self-deprecating humor uh, that bellied deep uh, mutual respect. Uh, Mr. Kim, in a previous interview... Oh, okay, now this is like question and answer. Mr. Kim, in a previous interview, you told us that Nier Automata helped you re rediscover uh, the kind of game that you want to create. This became the trigger for the decision discussions today uh, uh, with Mr. Yoko. Uh, first of all, what elements of Nier were insp did inspired you the most? I was inspired by Nier Automata in many ways, and it's hard to point out one specific thing. The game has so many fascinating, or fascinating elements. The image of a strong female warrior in a devastated world left by its inhabitants struck me. I also was impressed by the quality of the story. I enjoyed playing the game so much. And of course, I saw all the endings. However, 
Since Mr. Yoko's talent is, as a storyteller is exceptional, I can't do anything similar. Besides the bigger plot structure, Stellar Blade's story is different from Nier Automata. When I first saw Nier Automata, it really inspired me in ways including the gameplay, Mr. Yoko. Since, you're, uh, since you were kind enough to come over today, do I understand correctly that you approve of the game that is so highly inspired by your work? That's really cool to see these guys kind of go back and forth and talk about these kind of things, especially when they're like, uh, another week for Sandland. What is Sandland? Have I seen that? You think it'll get a PC port? I don't know if it will or not, to be honest. It's always really nice though, to like see these different, uh, to see these different um, developers that are like inspired by one another and kind of understand where like all their stuff is coming from or like where they're getting most of their, most of their, <sighs> most of their ideas from like, you can obviously look at like Stellar Blade from the outside and immediately say to yourself like, oh, for sure. Like this is inspired by Nier Automata, which by the way, Nier is such a fantastic game. Such a fantastic game. And I like, I don't know if you could really like put it on the same, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know if you really put it on the exact same scale as, uh, like, St like Stellar Blade is fun. It's cool, but it's its own game. So like trying to draw those conclusions between the two things, I don't know if it's really going to work. Akira Toriyama's game, very unique. I didn't play. Oh, Sandland. That is his. Yeah. I know which one you're talking about now. Yeah. I need to keep an eye out for that one. That's going to be like basically like the last media that he made before he passed. That's crazy. There's an anime also. I didn't know that really. I did not know that. Do you think you'll go to PC port? I don't know, man. The problem is, is that like Sony's so weird about that stuff. They're so weird about it. And I don't really understand exactly why they're so weird about it because like, it's just free money. You know what I mean? Like how many people are realistically not buying PlayStations because they play on, because, uh, because they can buy the game on PC. I feel like more times than not, most people are probably just not going to play the game. They'll just play other stuff. There's plenty of games on PC for them to play. There's not really a whole lot of games that'll really like force you to want to go and play something else. You know what I mean? Or like go buy a whole other console just to be able to play it. I hate exclusivity so much. Really? City builders continue to dominate on Steam as Manor Lords becomes its most wish listed game. Really? Okay, I don't know if I've seen this. Been chosen to govern a land of great peril and promise. It has suffered long from the scourge of banditry, but there is another threat an illegitimate baron who claims the northern territories as his own. Will you prove yourself worthy of his honor, or will you perish by the traitor's steel? So, is this like a? I don't understand. So what is it? Is it like Sims or something? I don't really get this. I would totally get Mana Lords if it had a co-op element, but I get bored when you play games like the solo. So it's kind of like Age of Empires. I don't know. City builder, sim, or civ? Okay. Hello, kitty cat.
I don't know if this is a kind of game for me. Like, I mean, kind like maybe I could play something like this. I don't know. You develop into like a passive tree and then you like what train soldiers. And you're like build up your, your, your empire. You have to defend it from attackers. Huh. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that'd be something I'd be like interested in playing. That's interesting to see that games like that are like becoming the most wishlisted game. Becomes its most wishlisted game. Games usually get like super wishlisted when what? What happens? Sequisha restarted like five or six times until he got a start where he didn't immediately burn down. Dear Lord. Getting tired of devs trying to make their own spin-off city builder extraction shooter. Yeah, I like I've never really been into games like that. I mean, it looks interesting. Yeah. That yeah, looks interesting. Paradox for me has been top tier. Uh, it's been nice to see another dev cutting into their territory. Yeah, I don't know. I'm yeah. Yeah, I I, I don't know what to tell you guys. Like for me when it comes to st like there's games that I look at and I'm like Yeah, probably not for me. Probably not for me. God, why is everything so bright? What is this? Genshin Impact Honkai mo anime movies get government backing. Yeah, no, duh. Shanghai wants Hoyoverse to help develop its film industry. Yeah, yeah. If you want to get, yeah, this is like a no-brainer. Hoyoverse offici officially received government, uh, received, uh, received the government of Shanghai's backing to create anime movies based off its Genshin Impact and Honkai IP, which both include Hon Honkai Impact Third and Honkai Star Rail. Uh, according to Chinese news article, thanks to the translations, uh, Shanghai is looking to become a major player in the film industry, uh, which is why the government is working out a plan to, to kickstart things. During a visit to Hoyo versus HQ in Shanghai, key members of the CCP branch responsible for this topic were shown the company's facilities, including the real-time motion capture stage, 3d model animation department technologies which may play a role and yeah okay yeah i mean something like this is kind of a no-brainer to be honest with you like why wouldn't they want to make a why wouldn't they want to push genshin impact it's one of the most profitable games it's the most profit if i, I would imagine it's probably the most profitable chinese game ever made most likely like video game um the the company's relatively i mean like depending on the people that you're talking to the company's like well looked on people really appreciate the game yeah, why wouldn't you want to make a money printing machine? Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm sorry, but like a, a Holyoverse anime is probably going to do fantastic. Um, they already have good animators to begin with and good artists. All of their, all of their like commercials and ads that they do are great. You know what I mean? They all work out really well. Like, look at how many view, look at how many views their stuff gets on YouTube. Like, just their trailers. Yeah, like, look at this. Look at this. Character trailer. 3.2 million views. Character trailer. 11 million views. 2.4 million views. 2 million views. 2.2 million views. 1.5 million views. Like, they're, they're like, 3.3 million views. 736k million, million views. And this is just like an event. 9.3 million views, 2 million views. Like, and this is just Honkai Star Rail. If you looked at like... All of these. 1.4, 1.5, 2.2, 1.4. .2, this is like a music video or something like that. 
all the character it, like ones which like usually will have like animated animated scenes or like an anime scene to like introduce the character and stuff all of these have like a high amount of views on youtube it's like incredibly consistent the amount of views that they can pull on this you know what i mean so if you have that many viewers that are willing to watch just youtube videos of the characters and like the animated short animated short films and stuff like that you're gonna have people that are gonna line up to the walls just to go and see just to go and see a movie based on the same thing you know what i mean yeah it's an infinite yeah it's an infinite money glitch yeah it makes 100 uh, percent sense why they would want to do something like this you know what i mean why wouldn't you Honkai and Genshin are probably the best premium gacha experience in the market. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for people that like gachas. Honestly, it's, and I'm for people that like gachas, it's just people that like anime style games to begin with, because there's just not a lot of them. There's more. There's been getting to be more. You know what I would really like to see? I would like to see Hoyoverse do the same thing that... Um, uh, that Psy Games has done where, you know, they had a free to play game. They pumped it out. They made a bunch of money with the free to play game, but then they turn around and make a premium game with that money. Like that would be really cool to see something like that. That's what I like. I like something like, um, something like, uh, what is it called? Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. Like that's such a really cool that's such a really cool thing to do. You know what I mean? A nine gotcha standalone for Genshin would be nice. Yeah, and plus on top of that, like you gotta realize is that like doing something like that, you're only going to attract you're just gonna you're casting a wider net at that point. You know what I mean? You're just casting a wider net you're going to be able to bring more people in because there are people that are turned off by your monetization. There are people that are turned off by the idea of a gotcha game. You know what I mean? I think that like too many times more than not, like most people like just immediately attribute like, oh, anime fan probably likes gotcha games. Like, no, for the most part, like don't be wrong. Like I had my hook. I was, I, I was in deep when it came to gotcha games for a long time, but it's just not like, it's just not sustainable to keep playing something like that. Not unless you're absolutely loaded. Or you're somebody that just likes getting, you know, likes getting stepped on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Unless you're somebody that likes getting stepped on all the time. It could be something like that. You know, a masochist or something like that. A money masochist, a pay pig. Or the person that likes to watch other people succeed and you have to continue to struggle at the very bottom just to be able to try to do anything. Yeah, which that, that happens all the time. You know, you have all the people that are like, uh, you have people that are playing games like free to play and they, yeah, <laughs> I, like that's yes, exactly. Exactly. Slug. That's what I'm talking about. I think that th that's one of the one things that I think it's one of the one things that I think a lot of people like uh, for me, I personally, that's why like playing a game free to play sucks sometimes because you're wa you're walking around and you're seeing like all these other people that are wearing that are like you know, either wearing or they have characters or they have like something that like you don't have and because of that it's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Well, sadly enough, guys, I have been eliminated from OTK's top streamer. Too bad. Too bad. Yeah, I kind of saw it coming, man. I'm too low. In it. I'm, too, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not the, that kind of energy. And plus on top of that, their next one was a cooking a cooking stream challenge, which is like the last thing that I want to do. <laughs> Why? I don't know, man. I'm fucking boring. <laughs> you were doing so well. I didn't do anything. I sat around just telling stories all day, which I like, which personally I'm glad to do. <laughs> to be honest, it's basically a popularity contest. Yeah, and I'm not going to win one of those. Nor do I, nor do I honestly care to win one of those in the first place. Plus on top of that, the other thing is too, at the exact same time, like the other thing to think about as well is like, 
So, um, not using this as an excuse, but totally using this as an excuse. Uh, I'll tell you guys this. Uh, like, I also do this full time and I run a YouTube channel. A lot of the other creators that are on there don't do that. They don't. So, like, like I have to make YouTube videos. I have to keep pumping out content. I have other things I need to do. You know what I mean? Like, I, I have other uh, uh, other responsibilities that I have that I have to be able to take care of. And as such, this is just Twitch. So it's like, it'd be cool to grow on there. And I'm glad to, that I've started to grow on there. And it's it's been relatively consistent. We've been growing at a pretty good pace. And something like this gives a little bit of extra exposure, which is really nice. But for the most part, I'm just more worried about just doing my own thing rather than worrying about shit like that. Just get Asmund Gold to react to another one of your videos. Yeah, I mean, he taps on that stuff when it's like relevant. I haven't just, I haven't really been like super relevant with a lot of content lately, which I need to like kind of get back into like the one thing that I've taught and I've talked about this. I told you guys about this before. Like I got to get back into doing news, man. Like I've got, I've, I've fallen off of it. Like, don't get me wrong. Like I include news into a lot of the stuff that I do. Right. I include news into a lot of different stuff, like into my, into my essays and whatnot. But one of the things that I've gotten away from lately is I haven't been just like grabbing an article and like talking about a topic as much as I usually had in the past. And what that does is that kind of keeps me out of like current times. You know what I mean? It's like even like even like today's video, which I'm sure probably didn't do all that well. Um, like even that's old news. Like it, it came out in February. This is now, you know, middle to end of April. Like I'm, I'm way late, way, way late. So it's like I have to be kind of careful of that kind of stuff. And a lot of that's just getting like distracted by other things more than anything else. Slow and steady. Sadly enough, there's no such thing in content creation. Slow and steady is the exact opposite of what you want to do. It very much promotes like work hard, work hard and fast. Maybe try to focus on one side. Um. Well, I don't want to do that either. Like, I like streaming. I like streaming. Yeah, but those people burn out after uh, after a year. Uh, maybe. Uh, me, probably not. I'm a, I'm a psycho, so it doesn't really bother me that much. This is just what I do. <clears throat> like, I'm just going to continue to grind YouTube and just kind of do my thing regardless. Fast and unstable. Godspeed. That's me. Try shorts on news. So the only problem is when it comes to like short content, I like uh like technically you can post like YouTube shorts and things like that. And like YouTube shorts and stuff are really cool. Like they, they can do really well. But also at the exact same time, the other problem is is that like you start attracting people that only really watch like short form content. Like I don't know about you guys, and maybe this is just me being anecdotal. It, it very well could just be me being anecdotal. Um, but I, uh, what was I going to say? I only really watch long videos. Uh, do you guys? Cause that's what I do. I, I don't really watch, like, I don't really watch TikTok. I don't watch any of that stuff. I literally just watch, um, Yeah, that's it. I watch, that's it. <laughs> I watch long videos. I do not watch TikToks. I don't watch shorts. Every once in a while, I'll see like a clip or something like that. But for the most part, I only watch like long videos. Different audiences. Yeah, sometimes it is different audiences. Watch is a strong word. Put it on in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
I prefer longer, but uh, I'll check out clips uh, to find new channels. Yeah, sometimes like clips and stuff like that can be really good for things like that as well. Yeah, for sure. She hit the mob button. What is this? This is good. Uh, does it matter if the majority of your audience watches clips only? Yes, because then they won't watch your long form videos. So how, the reason why I say that negatively impacts the rest of the, the content on the channel is because uh, those people will still be suggested your long videos, but they won't watch them, which will then tell which will then tell YouTube that you that this, you know, more people are not watching your videos, which means that YouTube doesn't want to suggest it to more people because they don't see it being useful. That's basically what's going on. Just came from your Warframe vid. Uh, glad to see another Tenno. Uh, hope to see. Hope to see some more. I yeah, appreciate it, man. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad that 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 video is actually starting to find like some traction. People are actually starting to find it now, which is really nice. That's the other thing too. Is like uh, that like YouTube can be really testy anytime you're trying to like touch into like a new game or a new market, especially for like content that I make. Uh, and Trev, thank you for the uh, Prime, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. I uh, usually watch you on YouTube after the stream ends, uh, but I wanted to make sure I made it. Uh, I made it for the live stream today. Appreciate it, man. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, did you watch Invincible season two? No, I haven't had the chance to yet. Like I've been watching a bunch of other stuff. After Fallout, maybe I'll watch it. The problem, like the the issue is, is that like like uh like both like the boys and. Um, and Invincible are like such a roller coaster. Like they're like there's always something happening that it just it kind of exhausts you after time, after some time. You know what I mean? Uh, uh I'm good with girls, but I'm obsessed with a girlfriend of mine. We were close friends with that girl, but I know she doesn't like me. But I haven't been able to get rid of feelings for her. help me. Legendary drops. Um. If I had to get on, if I had to give honest opinion on something like that, I mean, the only thing that you can really do is just be honest. But like the problem is, is like I'm just gonna tell you how it is. Like the thing is, like if the feelings aren't reciprocated, the friendship is ruined. So if you're okay with not being friends with that person afterwards, just keep that in mind that that's probably what's going to happen. I just like say like the cold truth when it comes to things like that, but that really is just the way it is. I, I can't tell you that there's ever going to be a situation in which you're ever going to like confess feelings to a girl that's a friend and then that turn out to be where you guys are still friends afterwards because the thing is, is that like, I mean, sometimes the girls are okay with it because they don't mind friend zoning somebody. But at the exact same time, the thing is, is like what ends up happening is like those feelings like still remain. And then you, you become that guy that's just like always there in the background and like they know and you know, and it's never comfortable for anybody. And uh, low tone, thank you for the uh, thank you for the five gifted subs, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. I think everybody should be honest. Not always. Not always. Not always. Like, I'm just being honest. Like, chances are something like that, um, you know, will kind of flip on you. I feel like War, uh, Warframe players uh, really uh, are really attracted to videos from new players because we all enjoy new people getting into it. It's an interesting dynamic. Um, I think that, like, I think that people, like, want to share that experience. They also want to kind of relive it at the same time. That's another part of it. Like people like reliving the experience of, you know, through other people, you know, um, but also at the exact same time, the other thing is, is that, uh, like they do want to try to like give advice to people. I, that, and the thing is, is that like, I personally, 
I like content like that myself because it's a good I it's a good way to like get a different perspective. Like, what does this game really look like from the perspective of somebody that's never played it? You know what I mean? Like, what does this game really look like from the perspective of somebody that's never played it? And then you get to see that and go, oh yeah, that makes sense why they would think that. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Like, don't get me wrong. There's plenty of comments from people that are like, bro is asking for steeled path. I don't even know what that is. Just because I, just because I say I don't want to one shot everything for 20 hours straight, 30 hours straight. It's getting, it, it's starting to ramp now a little bit slightly, but most of that actually has to do with the fact that I'm using like new weapons and new, uh, and, uh. Yeah, just new weapons because I'm using new weapons and they don't have mods. So now things are doing less damage, right? But. Um, yeah, it's just really weird. Like, you know, you'll, ha you'll have uh, some people that like uh, they imagine that you know more about the game than you actually do. And then, yeah, it's weird. Did you see his kingdom come. King oh, my God. Could I speak today? Kingdom come deliverance get announced. No, I didn't see that. We'll check that out later. I right, mean, just watch the trailer. Over 200 people working on it this time. Is it going to show gameplay? I always dreamt of leaving this place. Becoming more than a peasant. I love folks. I love folk music. You know the trouble with an adventurous life. It can end before it gets started. This is a longer vid with a, with a gameplay reveal. Okay. Congratulations, Sir Knight. You finally become a man. Hmm. Wake up. Pull yourself together, Henry. Is this not the one with the gameplay, or is this the the two minute one is not long enough, or what? Looks cool. I don't I never played the first one. I never played the first one. I'm in a hundred percent, really. No, 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 no. You can uh, just post it in the Discord or something like that. Uh, 
Peggy 18. Oh, it shows like the composer and stuff like that. I might save watching this. I might save watching this for, for the next stream. Just because it's going to be a little bit longer. And I got, uh, I got stuff I got to get. I got to, I have a hockey game I'm going to tonight. Kingmakers. Yeah, I saw this like a month ago. Yeah, I saw that like a month ago. Long, long time ago. The dev interview too? No, I didn't get to see the dev interview. No. Came to come deliverance is six. Uh, like what kind of game is it? I don't really understand. Is it like a what like a third person action game or what? Love hockey, hope your team wins. Chances are no. First person shooter? What? Oh, first person RPS. Or RPG. Oh, okay. It's like first person shooter? Like what? First person hardcore RPG. Oh, okay. First person medieval RPG. Oh, okay. That's realistic. Like realistic in a good way or realistic in a bad way? Because like sometimes that can go in a bad way, like a not fun way with unusual combat. Interesting. Maybe I might check it out. I don't know. I don't know. My plate's like full right now. I got so many other things I got to cover. So many other things that are coming up as well. I mean, I, I might check it out either way. I don't know. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. I don't know why the bot didn't take care of the last one. Really weird that, like, the uh, bot didn't ban the last one. <sighs> Block chatter allows bot. Yeah, I know. It's so weird. Well, I mean, it, it's supposed to be it's supposed to be blocking links in general because, uh, like, nine times out of ten, when somebody shares a link, it's usually it's usually a bot that's hopping in chat. It's like, hey, this is how you can get viewers. I don't fucking I don't need like how do people not realize like how detrimental it is for you to bot? Like, botting is just not good. Like, there's very few people that can bot successfully and use it in a way for them to be able to like find some like monochrome of success, if that makes any sense. Like, there's very few ways for you to be able to do that. Very few ways for you to be able to do that. Um, Like, especially like, um, because like there's some people that I've seen that have tried to like bot on YouTube. Like YouTube's the worst place to do it. Because what, it'll, what that'll do is if you bot views on YouTube, it'll just kill your algorithm. Because all it's going to do is it's just going to like, like they're not real so and obviously the bots are not watching the whole video they just click the video a bunch of times to make it look like it got a bunch of views but the issue with that is is that um it drives down its view time and it will make it where youtube will think nobody wants to watch it and it's not a good video so it'll just kill it twitch is also the same way to be honest like imagine like going into somebody's stream and they have like 10k 10k viewers and nobody's talking just like you already know what's going on so weird i think sometimes like it's the number that make people make people feel better how's your day been it's been a good day i had a lot of fun today it was nice talking about just random shit cough extra life yeah yeah that's an example for sure Though, though the problem is with that is like that was actually like uh, it's essentially botting. They're just like linking through another website. It's like using their guide website. Better to have four viewers sleeping in another tab. Yeah. 
I was offered once by a friend for a bot army on my little channel and I said no. I felt that that was cheating. Glad I said no. Yeah, no, never use bots. The problem is, is that like, I don't know, like you're inflating numbers to make yourself feel better. But at the end of the day, all you're doing is lying to yourself. What's the point? Like, what is the point? And in the case of like Fex, Fex or Alive, I mean, like they're literally just like, I mean, from what I gather, seeing that most of their stuff is coming from embedding, like you're just lying to advertisers. That's not good for anybody. I don't think, I don't know if Fex or Life does that on YouTube though. I think their YouTube is probably relatively healthy. There's rules about embedding that they ignored. Yeah. Yeah, you'll see that. Stroma needs you to fill out this capture. Yeah. Yeah. Some re for some odd reason in the mood for curry. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be getting some food here. I'm getting pretty hungry. I'm getting pretty hungry. Captain, thank you for the uh, sub over on Twitch, man. Appreciate that. Thank you for the tier one. Uh, did you see Take Two laid off 500 employees, even though the CEO got a raise of 72 million dollars? They've been doing that forever. Their CEO is like, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Take Two CEO is the is the highest paid CEO currently in gaming. It used to be Bobby Kotick, but it's not Bobby anymore because Bobby gone. Bobby got the bag and left. Bobby got the bag and left. Bobby's looking to buy TikTok. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see about that. Yeah, the man, the myth, the legend, the guy that got the bag and, and, and fucking... Who knows what he's going to do with it now. He has a whole lot of money. More money than he needs, that's for sure. Food sounds good. Food does sound good. I hate Take-Two with a passion. I don't really have like an opinion on Take-Two. Do I? Hmm. So they own Zynga, Rockstar, and 2K. 2K is garbage. Like they just put out slop. Other than like, I guess Civ Anthology. I don't know if that was any good. PGA. The quarry was kind of cool and interesting idea. Uh, Borderlands games, which those are, those are good. Uh, but like, I think they just sell like the big box editions of those now. Man, they made Mafia back in the day. What a good game. Marvel Midnight Suns. Yikers. No Rest of the, I guess they produced or published. They must've published No Rest for the Wicked. And then they own Rockstar. What studio did they lay off from? They're probably going to lose more, to be honest with you. It's EA's Mini-Me. Yeah, it is EA's Mini-Me. That's probably actually pretty accurate. Should you buy a full price Ghost of Tsushima director's cut or wait for 40% off? for four years ago or wait for 40 percent off for four years ago i don't know that's a odd question i mean i would, if you don't want to spend the money on ghost of tsushima when it comes to like pc if that's what you're asking just yeah give it some time i'm sure it'll go on sale everything goes on sale eventually 
that's like Ubisoft games. Ubisoft is probably the most aggressive when it comes to like putting discounts on their games. A Ubisoft game comes out and it's too expensive for you. Literally wait like a month and the game will be on sale. Wait like a month, a month and a half, the game will already be on sale. They're so, they're so, uh, uh, they're quick to the trigger. They're quick to the trigger with throwing out, uh, discounts on stuff. Sale or no, it'll still be bad. Yeah, true. True, 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 true. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of the stream for me today. I have a uh, I have a dinner to go to. I have a hockey game to go and see. I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my evening and hang out and chill out a little bit, kind of wind down a little bit from the uh, excitement of the day and uh, and do that whole thing. Uh, tomorrow is Friday. I will be streaming tomorrow. We will probably play... What did I say? Did I say I was going to play Warframe this weekend or was I going to play... I don't know. I kind of want to go kill some bugs in Helldivers 2. We'll play both, maybe. We'll see. Uh... Outside of that, my friends, uh, I didn't sub until I figured out why not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, stay cool. Stay righteous. Stay safe, my friends. Thank you guys for all showing up. Thank you guys for the subs. Thank you guys for the super chats. Thank you for the memberships over on YouTube. We'll be streaming again tomorrow. We'll talk about actual news and stuff tomorrow. I'll try to get some stuff together for that. And then uh, we'll kind of go from there. So I thank you guys for stopping by. Uh, today's been an absolutely fantastic day. I hope you guys have the great rest of yours and i will see you guys next time